sweet, sweet Corolla doing his act. Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. A choice we're going to make it. Get it on. Woo. Thanks for telling a friend. Thanks for tuning in. We love that about you. Dr. Drew is hanging in studio because Zhao Ying Summers is here, and he is not, I should say, she is not only one of our favorites, but Dr. Drew's favorites yeah, as well. I'm Zhao Ying. So uh, Drew was like, well, I'm going to be here anyway, and if Zhao Ying is coming out, then uh, I'm going to hang out. So I said, let's make it a party. So you got fans flanking you, Zhao Ying. I love Drew and Susan. Yes. Mimi and Susan. I like Susan more. Yeah, that's really? for sure. Because we can share makeup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and style and clothing yes. tips. Yeah. Yeah. She came to our house. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would, uh, I oftentimes think about the amount of time women spend on hair in general, just hair alone. Forget about the makeup or the procedures or whatever it is they're 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 doing in terms of their aesthetic and think about how many hours that would remove, how many productive hours that would remove from your life. Like I always said, and depending, see you have straight hair. Yes. And that's in fashion. I think so, but I think women do, and now I think about it, women do their hairs for the other women and the gays, actually. Yes. Real straight men don't yes. give a fuck. Just get That's the titties right. out. <laughs> Possibly not yeah. in that order either. Could be <laughs> gays and then women. And I think about women with kinky, curly hair, especially some ethnicities, and the time they spend on that hair oh, and yeah. the money they spend on that hair. And I have theories. I think, um, I think Michelle Obama could have cured this problem. She could have, she could have gone full natural oh, yeah. in the White House and said, ladies, f- let it fly. Because mm-hmm. they're constantly saying to women, baby, you're beautiful no matter what shape you're in, what size you are, whatever they do. They, they, you're beautiful. And then they go, let me get a hot comb out and straighten my kinky black hair. <laughs> well, if you're beautiful just how you are, then just wear it. And it's also an issue with black women not wanting to swim in a swimming pool and thus creates a danger because mm, if you just spent 200 bucks on your hair, you're not diving in the deep end of a pool. Mm. Yeah, and make, you know, Megan Marco, she keeps saying that uh, people are being racist, but she looked Italian to me because her hair is so straight. If she had her like curly hair, yes. I can see, oh, they are being racist. Like, you look like she looked... Like uh, she's a Latina. I, I'm. I'm not trying to be mean. But I don't even know what she is. She doesn't look like anything. She, she looks like an American. She, yeah, she's a hot me. American woman. And right. Her hair is always straight. She's right. been all the time. Her hair is straighter than mine. Right. But it is interesting in that you use hair as a, as a tool mm-hmm. because Colin Kaepernick had a clean shaved head. And as I always say, looked like a Syrian cab driver. No one had any idea what his fucking ethnicity did. When you saw Colin Kaepernick enter the league, you didn't go, oh, another black guy playing quarterback. You just go, I I don't know what he was, right? Now he has a six-foot fro. And the reason he has a six-foot fro now is because he's retired from the NFL and he's become a race hustler. So now he gets he wants to get paid from Nike or Netflix or HBO or whatever it is. So now the hair serves him. It didn't really serve him in the past. And Meghan Markle's interesting because she always wants to talk about being discriminated against as a black woman, but the hair takes precedent with a woman. Mm. If she were smart, she'd go Kaepernick fro mm. oh, yeah. and then claim the title as a black woman and thus be <laughs> defended, d- thus, thus be able to call everyone a racist. Yeah, you need Kaepernick when he was uh, entering the league or you know his first year, uh, the season in the league. And by the way, Drew. Yeah. Your hair is as it was when I met you 25 years ago. There's a little less of it, but it's as as it was. You got a picture of me 25 years ago out in the front row right. here. My hair is as it was 25 years ago but, as well. Yes, and... So why is Kaepernick gone from the opposite of bald to a huge fro? Is it because that's the way he likes wearing his hair? Or has he become a race hustler and he needs the hair to make a point. I have no opinion. I, yeah, I Drew, think if I ever want Drew to shut up, I talk about Well, they're racing. friends <laughs> of mine. They're, they're, you know, and his girlfriend's a good friend of mine. And stuff. I, I yeah, he said, but he calls, he's a race hustler. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, that's what he calls this country. So he calls this country racist and he gets paid. Hmm. Well, well, so that's his job. Okay. So I don't know, maybe, maybe you disagree with meter made. <laughs> 
<laughs> and maybe they're fine people, but their job is giving you tickets Fair for enough. being parked in the red, right? Fair enough. So that's what Kaepernick does. I think he's, he's a smart business. It's business. I'll, I'll do whatever you Yeah, say, unfortunately, his business is, is agitating the country into thinking we live in a racist nation. But if you can get past that part emotionally or psychologically, then you can get paid. I would have difficulty. And, you know, th- there's money and there's bodies at, at stake. People get killed because you think you've convinced the nation it's racist. But if you can look past that and hammer a paycheck, then yes, that's mm-hmm. that's what he's doing. And... And I think that we have side by side. I'm just saying, did he have a dramatic, did he have oh. dramatic thoughts about what, w- how to wear his hair? Oh. And then why didn't he just wear his hair this way in college? The huge fro. If that's the way, if that's in fact the way he wears his hair. And when he start dressing in all black turtlenecks and uh, pleather black geese. He- black geese. <laughs> He wants to look like a black Jesus. He, yeah, he, okay, he, but that's how he gets paid. Yeah, I'm just saying. Smart I, business. Smart business. Meghan Markle. PR. Smart business. Yeah. Doing the race hustle. Destructive to the country you call home, who embraced you, but but good, good for business. So good for you. Okay, but I don't know what makes you different than somebody else who sells things. You know why? Why? We look down upon people that uh, steal catalytic converters. So even though it's business, it's good business, a little bit harmful, but it, it's business. I would argue this is more harmful, but all right. He's a he's a race hustling hero, and that's how he wears his hair. He can hide the cash in his hair, though. He can hide cash. the cash yeah, that's nice. in his hair. Yeah. Yeah. So you were born with beautiful, silky, straight Sugar, hair. Yes. And... It just so happens that that's the way we like it. That's so you good. don't have to spend, you can spend your time here. thinking about comedy. I know. I can think about comedy and just and makeup. My, yeah, makeup. <laughs> yeah, just makeup. Yeah. Now, it strikes me that so many women spend so much time in this world thinking about that. It would put you at a deficit. If you think about it. Oh, I thank God. I Well, think about the time we spent in the 70s screwing around with our hair. And what a burden that was. That was a small version of what women contend with their entire life. Yeah. You needed to have the straight feathered back hair for the dudes. Oh, yeah, in the 70s? Mm. But oh. think about had to. Think required. about the rules with the dude's hair. Zero rules. Now. Yeah, Zero you, rules now. It's, now. now it's you wear it how you wear it. How right. Want to. Women have not signed off on that. No, because it's other women and gay men that they're involved right. with. Uh, other women and gay men should help a sister out and say, look, whatever, however you wear it, that's how, that's how you wear it. Also, I think women need to flip it around. They need something to do. <laughs> Stop. Don't you think? What do you mean? I said that women, you see women and they're constantly moving their hair oh, with their finger and yes. they're doing stuff. Yes. And it's not, it's like I, I told you, guys used to smoke a pipe mm-hmm. and it wasn't even lit one tenth of the time. Yes. They didn't enjoy pipe tobacco. They enjoyed using the pipe in a sort of totemistic mm-hmm. way. Like they yeah. pointed at you. Now, listen, son, yeah, yeah. you know, they point it and they the power symbol. They put it in their mouth and they ponder. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. like, hmm, hmm. And then they just do business with it sometimes. Yeah. Like, you know, peck, 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 tap it. and peck. They, It's not like they wanted to smoke a pipe. It was something for them to do. Yep. I think women should start picking the nose on the first date. Like <laughs> yeah. a hot woman, just like. And if you can think that's still attractive, that's your girl. Mm-hmm. That's like uh, if you think her picking her nose is hot. I, then I, don't, I don't think it'll bother guys. If, if she's actually think, hot. How about like she would eat it? Uh, it might, they might react. They might react a little <laughs> bit and then, for, and then pretend it didn't happen and forget about <laughs> but it. But that's first date. Yeah. If you're eating like, boogers and I feel like it can save on dinner, <laughs> you know, like she's all topped up. No appetizers here. She's all topped off on boogers. <laughs> I just think it's a good way to see if you think that person's still attractive. I don't care how hot she is. If she's eating boogers on a first date, she's insane. Mm, Get out. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Dawson. It's a disrespectful. It's, it's, you consider it disrespectful, yeah. Dawson. Yeah. Yes. Of no, I, I just immediately <laughs> figure she's up to something. We're at like being tested. Jr. He's a tester. Yeah. You're eating boogers. Yeah. Dawson has brought tested. his coupon <laughs> so that you could eat uh, a baby star. 
<laughs> at Carl's Jr., yep. and he could get one free <laughs> of equal or lesser value. Yep. And you're picking boogers. Unbelievable. <laughs> that you're eating curly fries in front of Dawson at a Carl's <laughs> Jr. I'll tell you what, let's go. Let's think about what the best fast food shit is. Let's do this. Like, like, like from what standpoint? I haven't eaten at Carl's Jr. in a million years, but the Carl's Jr. way back in the day, barbecued chicken sandwich with the barbecue sauce was and a weird good. brown yeah. bun yeah. on it was fucking killer. And they had a bacon Western cheeseburger that was good too. Yeah. yeah. Like the uh, Jack in the Box deep fried weirdo stoner tacos are, are the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Haven't eaten one in two million years. Yeah. But it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Simultaneously, the best and worst taco in the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. You can't yeah. say that about anything else. Yeah. Except uh -huh. for ACDC. <laughs> well, you could say that the Twinkie is simultaneously the best and the worst dessert mm -hmm. in the world, I think. What, Joey, what do you got? I eat a super healthy because my mom keeps telling me I'm fat and ugly. So I, my mind wired into eating spinach, and uh, I only eat things that make me unhappy, like oh, super healthy right. food. And and make you miserable. Yeah. yeah. Miserable. So yeah. you couldn't do a happy meal. I can't do it. I'll do it. I'll probably throw up later because my stomach can't take garbage. I mean, I fuck ugly, this is a disgusting man. I don't know why. My right. I, I just can't eat ugly but you food. Can, but you can tolerate ugly, dis disgusting. Whose mom man. was worse, Drew? Let's see if Jiao we Yang's. can figure this one no, out. No, no. Zhao Yang keeps asking me why she's so fucked up and then tells mm -hmm. these incredible stories about her mom. Mm. Uh, you, at least, Adam, uh, blame your mom for everything. Mm -hmm. and, and then don't ask about why you're fucked up. Ah, uh, that's the key. <laughs> At the externalization, right, right. not internalizing. Right, right. Oh. Smart. See, wow. Zhao Ying has been, it's all in, it's all trauma. And your, Adam's position is, mom was a bitch. Well, my or mom is a, a, a cunt. A, a loser. So, uh, a cunt, sorry. Yeah, my mom is a well, you, 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 you know what cunt. you need to do? You need to sign off and accept the fact that your mom's not a fan of yours. Yeah, but I, mom is, is a babysitting weird thing the, to do. But mom is now babysitting the kids so she can have her big career. Mm. So she needs the mom, so you can't talk too much shit about mom, Zhao Ying. Yeah, I, I need her. I, I need to use when her. She, when she starts speaking English, you're in big trouble. She's oh, learning right. now. She's speaking English a little bit now. She's speaking some English. She's learning uh -huh. English for three months. Mm -hmm. Now she can say things that I'm disappointed and you look <laughs> fat. <laughs> she has those first three yeah, she words. Learned, I'm disappointed. I said, Mom, say hello first. He said, Hurrah, I'm disappointed. <laughs> 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 she told an incredible story about her mom beating the shit out of her. Yeah, she beats me all the time. But in front of, like, you weren't allowed to, like, even have an attraction to the uh, opposite sex. In, oh, like, really? Like in middle high school, school in middle school and high T school. Tell that story. So, like, in China, um, love is illegal in middle school and high school. You cannot... Uh, hang, hold hand with another boy. Boys mm -hmm. and girls cannot do that because they... What about if you're gay? Oh, you die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't be gay. Yeah, we can't judge a culture though. But keep going. Yeah, you, there's no gay people. I don't think they is legal. Right. We should be. I mean, going it is illegal that, to we be gay. Be going sort of yeah, I'm, right. gays are good, but yeah, uh, they, you, nobody would be you, gay. You think with all the human rights talk, Kaepernick would be a little more interested in what's going on in China than and, he would and, be in many other countries. But huh. okay, keep going. Hmm. So, so I like this boy, and uh, he plays soccer, and he's good at school. He's cute, but now he look. Yeah, I think he's gay. He's too pretty to be like normal. Mm -hmm. I think he's a K-pop now. Mm -hmm. So I just really want his attention and he doesn't look at me. Then I do his homework and I just give him exam answers. And then he's like, you know what? We can walk around the, the back, you know, the back of like this. The playground. The playground. We can walk, but you can't hold my hand. You can walk mm -hmm. behind me like a mm -hmm. Jewish lady. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was walking behind him and then I start quoting poetry. I was translating Rumi. Mm. Poem into Chinese. He's like, You're such a good poet. I said, Yes, I wrote it. Oh, really? So then he just can't resist and hold my hand. And then mm -hmm. one of the girls saw that and told the teacher, My mom just uh, came in with her scooter. She walked in. I was in the classroom. She dragged my hair out. How old she was like, You whore. How old I was you? old. I was like 14. Is that how your hair got straight? I think so. I think <laughs> so. Mom pulling she on pulled it. She said, You whore. Like, drag me out. I said, What did I do? She goes, You are a whore. And then she stopped punching me and beating me up and she took me back home and then that's what happened and uh, i was then next day i came to school i was standing in the back i can't i can't sit by my chair because right. i was still being punished by school uh -huh. and that's what happens to uh, girls who hold boys hand the school signed off on the beating Jesus yes they, they think it was good it's a good idea they they were happy my mom did that because everybody saw it and yeah 
A lot of shame in that culture. That's crazy. Is my mom just uh, now? But then up? I'm then I'm not married. She's well, you like should a, get over it. Yeah, she's like be a whore. <laughs> like why can't you get a man? I'm like I don't know how to talk to guys. She goes just do what you did in high school. Whore up. Just do it. <laughs> you have Hurry to become up. a whore. Uh huh. Like a, that's when, another, when another, another English word. Years she learned whore. Whore up. You whore. Yes, yeah, whore. Yeah. She's a whore. Yeah. She hasn't learned where's the library. <laughs> no, she she's like you are a whore. You are fat. You, you those are English. Yeah. You were the library in this part of the world too. It's, uh, yeah, I know. It's weird. You have to use people at tech, I think, to yeah, to that's true. To the library. Um, so, and your mom, some. All right, here's what I've found, mm-hmm. and I think Drew will back me up if he's not too scared that uh, Kaepernick is listening or somebody. Um, men mellow, mellow nicely. Every dude I went to high school with who was a douche is mellow now. Well, the testosterone drops yes. for one thing. There's a biological mandate. Yeah. But men, mellow. Women get crazier. The dry <laughs> pussy doesn't keep, keep the edge up. The, the, the dry, dry pussy. Yeah, all that scraping when they're walking. Yeah. She's like, uh, I'm going to be nice to my daughter. Uh, she's uh, headlining the Apollo. Then she walks, you know, some paper just broke her leg. She goes... She destroyed my pussy, you know, yeah. and without she came out without the penis and destroyed my pussy. I'm gonna right. hate her forever. She wanted a boy. Yeah. So, your is your mom getting worse? Yes. The word she says, she would uh, now is uh, before she would uh, say something mean to me. She'd be like, "I hate you." She'd be like, uh, "Not a fan. I don't know why people like you." But remember, she always had the she, fallback of, "I didn't put you in a dumpster like all the other girls." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She is a hero. So she 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 saved my life, and she felt that she's not getting the respect she deserves. Whenever I abuse, she abused me. I should be like, you know what? You are right, mom. I'm a piece of shit. But I'll just be like, I I I think I don't look fat. She just got very offended by me. She goes, "You think I can't see?" You look very slender, by the way. You should because I she keeps telling me I'm fat, so I just don't eat anything that gonna get. I, I eat a healthy food and I don't get fat. But my mom just uh, get offended. Now she's older. She say mean things with a straight face. She but not to your kids. No, she thinks they are cute. Even my daughter, which is shocking because uh, she's chubby. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah, we're getting Ozempic for her. Ozempic. Yeah, Ozempic <laughs> for toddlers. She's three. <laughs> oh, for three olds. Uh, Drew. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, you know what's weird? Uh, my, <laughs> your mom had it. My mom had it. Uh, sure, Zhao Ying's mom has it. But like some weird, they need some reverence or respect or deference or something like that. Um, my mom would do that. She'd get pissed off or something and then wouldn't call me because she was kind of trying to make a point. Mm, that's passive aggression. Oh, yeah. See, my mom, just aggressive, aggressive. Right. But my mom would do stuff like saying, you know, and so it'd be like... <clears throat> But my mom not calling me be like someone saying, oh, well, no more poi and chicken liver omelets for you, yeah, yeah. young man. And I'd just look around and go, oh, good. Yeah. And this is good. Like most most of the people that try to stall me out with, I'm not going to talk to this guy and I'll send a message. I'm always very secretly happy yes. that I don't have to talk to them because mm-hmm. obviously we don't have a great relationship. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here, you know. Mm-hmm. And then at some point she'd get, angry that four months had gone by and then she'd be pissed off and call or whatever. Now she's pissed off for the lack of content. Right. But the the point is, is I have kids and you have kids, Drew. Yeah. Um, My kids never, never call me. Yeah. Well, they're young. Is yeah. Jiao Ying's young. Got it. What I'm saying is, I, they don't call me ever. I mm. call them. Uh. I'm fine with it. If they're high school kids, though, it's it, that's that. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't take any of it. There's no reverence. I, no. I say to my son. Almost every Saturday night, uh, hey, you want to go get some dinner with your, your dad, maybe see a movie or something? He goes, I'm going out with my friends. And uh, that'll be that. And, and hey. I, I don't have any thoughts about it. I'm not offended by it. I'm, I'm not put off by it. I don't I'm say a little, I'm the I world's go a little, greatest dad. I go a little the other way. I wanted so badly to be away from my parents. From I, I left at 17 and did not go back. And when they want to be around, I'm a little, I can't like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little... When you're confused. kids, yeah, I'm confused. When your kids want to yeah. be around, and so you. and so, I worry that I'm not sort of they encouraging money, that enough because that's yeah. a good thing, you know. It's, yeah, but it's confusing to me as somebody who wanted to get the fuck away. Yeah. Well, I th- I think you have a lot more to offer mm. than your parents did. Mm. My parents didn't have anything to offer, so they weren't attractive to want to you know Hang chillax with, with right, or whatever. Right. And also, when you remove the can't provide anything. You know, cars, Disneyland tickets, cash, you know, whatever. 
uh, you, it's just really, you. It's just you. <laughs> it's just you, and the you ain't ain't much. That's that is a tough putt. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to hang. It's yeah. usually you either really like the person, want to hang out with them, or they can provide something. Well, our parents kept the negative shit going, though, that they established during childhood, which is sort of odd, right? I think feel like your mom, Zhao Ying, has sort mm-hmm. of turned a little bit. She's still a little rough on you, but she sort of softened to your kids, and she's doing the work of grandmas. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I'm paying for my my grandparents and my father's re- to retirement. I uh, think that's why okay. she didn't really well, want to kill me right away. There you go. But uh, it, yeah, she's not uh, excited about being around me. <laughs> I, I, you should know that uh, there's dates coming up. New York Comedy Club, January 21st and then February 17th. Neptune Theater. I played the Neptune Theater in Seattle, Washington. It's beautiful nice. there. Yeah. And then uh, off the hook, I'll be there as well, coming up a little before you will. Naples, Florida. That'll be uh, May 17th through the 19th. Uh, I'll get some, uh, I'll tell you the website so you can get some dates. Um, I got some stuff that Drew and I brought up um before all right here's a here's a thing so you can think about your um uh, mental sanity mm-hmm. i think we all need to do this and drew you tell me what you think okay um i went over the weekend to uh, my shop which is uh, sort of a, uh, a mess just we had to move out of one shop move to another it became kind of catch all and just stuff got s- thrown there and so it was a little out of order and uh, my guy, Sean, was working there because he'd show up there on weekends and work on his projects, not my projects. And I noticed that this staircase that I'd built, which was very nice, was covered with butcher paper, just paper, protective paper and tape. And it had been that way for a long time. And I said, uh, it's time to take all these this paper off of this landing and the stairs. There was a, a lot of and, and if and I tape. remember, was it is it sort of a acrylic stair kind of thing? Is it? I forget how, what you were doing. No, there. it's a nice. Uh, looks like a nice walnut stair. Okay, but very high end. Yeah, and it was covered by this dirty paper. So the last time I was in there, up. you were you were talking about the landing. You hadn't built it yet. Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, you thinking of the condo? I'm thinking of the locker. You know, yeah, that yeah. the the shop. The shop. Okay. Um, I don't know if I was talking about clear there. I thought I was talking about that in the condo. But anyway. Maybe that's my head doing that. I think that's your head doing some math. Either way. Uh, So I get down there and I start getting on my hands and knees. The paper's all dirty because people have been walking on it for two years. It's covered with dust and soot and stuff. And I'm just down there just tearing it apart, you know. And then Sean would periodically come over to me and he'd say, uh, I'll get the boys to do this on Monday. What are you doing scraping the tape with your fingernails each step of the way and pulling it back? And then I'd get a big bundle of it and I'd walk it out to the trash dumpster and throw it away. And then I'd come back again. I literally spent the entire Saturday on my knees tearing tape with my fingernails. And he kept telling me, i just have someone else do it. What are you doing? Uh, you want to spend your Saturday doing this. And I, and I realized at some point as I was fighting him off, that this was important. Yeah. I needed to do, I needed, it, it's been too long. I've not done a project. I've not got my hands dirty. I've not just just tilled the soil. You know what, what I mean? What do like, you think that is? Because I had a similar experience over the weekend with something else, but but I, I was like, thought, oh, that's, I haven't done that in a while. I was thinking a lot about you. And when we were talking many years ago on Loveline, um, this disease or disorder where people wanted to eat dirt. Oh yeah, yeah, and and cl- and uh, soap and chalk, and chalk and, and ashes and, and ashes and, ice. and maybe charcoal or something. Pica syndrome. Yeah, yeah, and because your body was deficient in iron, in iron, yeah. so you had a craving for dirt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I thought, well, that doesn't make you know. I remember I was I was equating it to that. Well, it doesn't yeah. make sense to eat chalk. It's Who just, wants chalk, but it you know, was that, your body was. But just, your body yeah. was telling you yeah, to do something, yeah. and it doesn't make soap, sense. Eat soap too. It didn't make sense for hard bars of soap. The rich white guy to spend the entire day of Saturday on his hands and knees, just doing grunty peeling, you know, yeah. tape pulling. You know, you take that thing with the fingernail on the tape and pull it, and a shard would come off, and then you'd have to pull the rest off. And I spent the whole day doing the the shittiest task you could. Think you'd much rather clean a bathroom yeah. for five hours than what I was yeah. doing. Yeah. 
But it was important. And yeah. I, th- I thought about that syndrome. Like, I'm trying to move back towards sanity. Yes. And my and something is compelling me to do it. Yeah. And, and I would argue that it's it's engagement in a way. I, I'm going to guess it's a lot of things on you. But one of them was COVID. Like, it's like it, nothing was joyous. We, creation was not something we yes. did. And I, if I were you uncovering the stairs, I'd want to behold what, what's under there, what I've done, and, and have the, joy, the, the, the uh, satisfaction of pulling the shit off, almost like pulling the curtain back on this. Uh, the boys came over the next day to watch football. Everyone was impressed by the stairs. Yeah. And then as they were watching football. I promptly got out a mop and the floor polish, and I was like, now I'm going to give it a buffing. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And so I had an experience And then one weekend. of them slipped and fell and sued me. But anyway, <laughs> but I, I the went to a, was there. I went to a birthday party with a group of people, and I thought, oh, I've not had this much fun socially in a long time either. Mm-hmm. Not, not that I haven't had social experiences and things were good, but there was just there was a certain pitch to it. I thought, oh, people are enjoying themselves again. We've, we've, we've like decided everything is shitty. Right. We can't enjoy anything. America sucks. We suck. We're dying of COVID. Everything bad, bad, bad. And it's sort of waking back up again. I think that's some of what you're having. Yes. Yeah. That was what I was having. Yeah. The primal excitement. The, getting your just, nails dirty. Just, just joy. I, I, just just the, the satisfaction. Just but, creation. And also the uh, the mundane, which we, we, we run from yes. screaming all the time. Yes. It's super important. It's super important just to do sort of boring yeah. shit. And just do it for a little while and engage in it. I don't know if you have a version of that. I, um, I'm i late for an event and I don't have my nails done. And uh, I my nail polish is very dry, very old. It's a dry old thing. I know mm-hmm. if I paint my nails, it's going to look like shit. And I mm-hmm. want to do it. I have to do it. And I did it five times. I clean it. I do it again. And it is dry. I stop spitting in there. <laughs> it's spitting. And I said, when's the heel peeing here? It's tiny hole can fit you. I, I couldn't stop from doing it. Then I was late. My nail was fucked up. And uh, I couldn't. I just can't stop. I know it won't work. But I have to do it. Were you, did you have the same satisfaction? No. With Adam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just uh, I had to do it. But just uh, doing it makes me feel like I'm changing my life. I'm wondering if kids even understand, you know, building a soapbox derby car or a project in the garage or right. even remember when you're a kid, Drew, and it, it, your friends or you or whatever would go, I'm going to pop a wheelie on my bike. And then you'd call your mom or whoever to come out and yeah. stand on the front porch and watch me. Yeah. I don't see kids doing that anymore. Do you? No, I think this is this general lack of enthusiasm or, you know, it just everyone's just... Argh. I think yeah, TikTok I, ruined everything. Maybe like the TikTok short videos. TikTok and Amazon. Yeah, you know, yeah delayed, Amazon. Delayed gratifications out the window. Everything just fucking shows up at the door. Yeah, you know what I mean. The food, everything, everything else. All right, I got a an interesting experiment to play with you guys. Ooh, Ooh so excited. Yeah, uh, we'll do that right after this. Better Help. This show is sponsored by Better Help. Well, New Year's time to focus. On some change, but how about what we're doing right? You know, think about that. I mean, everyone's looking at what to quit and what to start and what to stop, but what's working? Let's expand on what's working. Therapy can help you find your strengths and make changes that can really stick. I've always been a fan of therapy. I think it's a very important part of being a human being, especially now more than ever. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, convenient, and it's flexible. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. It is better help. Take care of yourself this year with better help. Am I right, Dawson? Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash Corolla today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Corolla. My mom lives with me. Um, she is a Chinese lady, speaks no English. Uh, <laughs> I was driving her to her dentist. We live in Weho, uh, you know, on Santa Monica Boulevard. Big window, LED lights, free HIV testing. <laughs> My mother doesn't speak any English, but she knows the word free. <laughs> so she told me, I want one free HIV testing. <laughs> I said, Mom, you can't have it. 
She said, "I can have everything that's free." I said, "Mom, you don't have HIV, so you can't test for it for free." She asked me, "Is HIV free?" I said, "It can be." She said, "You got me free HIV right now." I'm like, "Mom, uh, nobody is gonna give you free HIV in West Hollywood." No, we are not hot in WeHo. <laughs> I'm a two, you are a one. <laughs> Let's go to the valley. Jiayin Summers is on the Adam Carolla show. Yeah. All right. San Gabriel Valley, that is. Drew is yeah. hanging in because he's that big a fan. She has two comedy clubs. I didn't even know that. I you bought one in um, Pasadena. And then my club, I only fans came to me. They said they want to do comedy. I said, I can... Produce your first comedy show in my own club. So OnlyFans produced the OnlyFans comedy show. Oh. I had Matt Rife on it. Adam used to be in your That's comedy first, club. Uh, it's too small Zhao for him. Ying's but club uh, you did right in Hollywood. Yeah. Did you like you did it? the OnlyFans. Yeah. Great, great little place. Good people. Where is it? Uh, it's on Melrose, Melrose yeah. Coenga, next yeah. to Paramount. And now, mm. now we're in Pasadena. The Hollywood comedy. Pasadena is on Walnut. It's actually a minute away from the Ice House. But my ex-husband took it for me, and he ruined it. I still have the marquee on it. He didn't want it. He just don't want me to drive. Uh, 10 minutes and go to a club because <laughs> right. I live in Arcadia so he was like you can't have this because you're uh, going to be good for your career if you have that so yeah. he took it people That's, around the country don't know but Arcadia Monterey Park San Marino what are the cities Pasadena it's all, no, all just down the San road Marino. from Pasadena no no but San I mean Gabriel. these are Chinese Chinatown uh, Ch- uh, Chinese enclaves yeah Oh, like, like completely, and then there's a Thai, and there's My first a Vietnamese. My girlfriend was from Arcadia. Mm-hmm. Well, Arcadia, nice. it, 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 this was a million years. Yeah, it was in white. our era, no, it was the, the Apaches was the high school team that was right. Yeah. Now it's not like that. Um, they had uh, I don't know why, but this is reminded me of this. Um, there's a story I heard, which was um, archaeologists have found out. They did some digging, I think, in Pueblo, Colorado. The patchy thing reminded me of this. And they would found the bones of uh, many Indians. And 90% of them had trauma to the head mm-hmm. and to the bones. Mm-hmm. You know, their skull had been fractured sure. with, with a tomahawk or yeah, something. Yeah. I'm just saying, in the United States, we do this. Oh, there were peaceful oh. people who worshipped the sun and the earth. They learned, lived in harmony. They killed each other all fucking day and were horrible to and, and well, destroyed and raped and did everything else. This That's is true what, of all humans. This is all humans all the time. History, and yeah. so in slavery, yeah. Yeah. And they had slaves and everything else. And mm-hmm. my thing is, is first off, if it happened, it happened. It's called history. We're allowed to fucking report on it. If, if slaves learned a trade and then while they were slaves and then moved on to be blacksmiths, then th- and if it happened, we're allowed to say it, number one. Number two, why is every story conveniently the white man is the only person that had slaves and these people were living in harmony until we showed up and then we started trying to destroy them? It's like everyone had slaves. Everyone was brutal to everyone all the time. That's how it worked. Throughout history. On every, Throughout on every, history, on every continent. All the time. And yeah. I know you love the fucking story of the Mazzola squad <laughs> there talking corn goodness. We call it maize. And the Indian by the side. They were bashing each other over the head with a fucking stick and a rock strapped to the end of it. And that's what they did. Okay. So can we clear this up? And everyone owned slaves, they including did. the Indians. How about the Chinese? Yeah, oh yeah, there's a slavery time, there's slaves. The rich one would uh, make the poor one slaves. They are Did slaves. we send white people over to give you a prototype? Like, give, no, like no. lay out a scheme of how <laughs> slavery works? Or we, do you guys we, just stumble on that yourself? We know how to use people free. You just right. abuse them. And then the slaves have to be buried with the masters. Oh, if a that's master right. dies, the whole slave family uh, yeah. has to bury with them. Oh, that's right. So, mm-hmm. uh, so they can serve for them after I, Oh, right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Eternity of slavery. <laughs> So uh, that's a powerful, <laughs> that's a reasonable thought. All right. So what I was uh, laughing about with Drew, and I've, I've I brought receipts. I can back this up. Um, I was uh, on this show uh, making fun of uh, Whoopi Goldberg, not understanding intentionally what Trump was talking about when he said he was going to be a dictator on day one, and then he was just going to do it for one day <laughs> so he could shut the border down and drill for oil. Uh, That's what he said as a joke. 
And then Whoopi Goldberg um, misinterpreted that intentionally, and so did many journalists intentionally, and then went on to have a spasm about how he was going to round up gays and journalists and disappear them, which I have no idea how that would happen. But it was at the very top of the clip she announced what Trump announced. So uh, I'm going to bring it around. And uh, Dr. Drew, being a USC Trojan fan, knows uh, John McKay, legendary football coach. I'm going to do a little thought experiment and then go into the not too distant future as well. So first, um, I think we have Trump and Trump explaining that it's a that it's a joke. You are promising America tonight you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody except for day one. Except Look, what? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill. That's drill, not a that's, drill. That's not no, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm it. gonna be I'm gonna be, you know, he keeps <laughs> we love this guy. He says, You're not gonna be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. So that, okay? that, that sounds to me like you're going back to the policies <laughs> when you were president. All right. All right. And those aren't dictator maneuvers. Those are presidential maneuvers, just like uh, Biden day one basically opened the border and did away with the Keystone Pipeline and domestic energy. So first off, the example wasn't even that of a dictator. But uh, Whoopi Goldberg, who's a comedian, she didn't get the joke somehow. She just she didn't get that he was kidding around, which uh, any normal human being would understand that exchange but this is this is her i'm gonna be on day one i'm gonna be a dictator who says it to you tells you i'm gonna put you people away i'm gonna take all the journalists i'm gonna take all, all the right. gay folks all i'm right. gonna move you all you can stop it. he he said he's gonna be a dictator but he said he's gonna close the border and trail he didn't say he was gonna take gay people and journalists yeah. and do something with her so i don't know it falls under the heading of stupid or liar but this thing the journalists are engaging in, as I was talking to Dr. Drew about it on our show, this weird literal misinterpretation of, of things in, intentional to misunderstand. English is their first language, by the way. So they don't have your mom has an excuse. But, you know, Trump said inject they've bleach, learned, they've inject bleach. They have learned know? that what people say never goes viral. What goes viral is what somebody said they said. Right. I'm, I'm having that experience right now as we sit here. Somebody's saying something about me that is total BS. Well, I want to get into it. Yeah. I just want to finish this with what I was thinking about, which is, so a willful misinterpretation of a joke when you're supposed to be a journalist. Mm. And again, Trump said, inject bleach. He didn't say it. Nobody did it. Nobody thought it. But, you know, he said good people on both sides. No, he didn't say. It. He told people to go, uh, you know, raise hell at the Capitol. And then he said peacefully protest or march peacefully or patriotically, whatever. They, it's, it's a bizarre thing for a journalist to do to misinterpret. It's not really that. They're lying. But I was so I was thinking back on John McKay, who was a legendary football coach, USC, Four national championships, and he went to the expansion team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And they it was their first year, and they gave John McKay a ton of money to go over there in, I don't know, 1975, 76, and build a team. And they went like 0 and 14, maybe back when they played 14 games. What do you think, Drew? Do you think they played 16 back then? Oh, I, I remember when they played 11 in the 70s. So what was that? <clears throat> Probably 14, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, they gave, they interviewed him and he was funny and he would tell jokes. It's just, he was that guy. He was that guy joined in 75. How many games did they play in 1976 in the NFL? He was, Oh, he lost every game. Yeah. And they said to him, this is one of his famous quotes. He said, what do you think about your team's execution? And he said, I'm all for it. The joke. Right. Did that translate? <laughs> I, he, what do you think? Of, so offensives mm -hmm. execute plays. Yes. And execution is something that also happens with a guillotine. Yeah. So yeah. play on that word. Mm -hmm. What did you think about your offenses, your oh, team's that's, execution? That's, that's funny. 
I'm all for it. I want That's them all because they did a terrible job. I want them all executed. Right. Yes, I love that. And everyone it's laughed. Chinese humor. Yes, right. amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Now it was a joke in 1976 when uh-huh. he said it, and not a human being, or a reporter, or Whoopi Goldberg's mom thought it was anything but a joke. Mm -hmm. No one did anything other than laugh. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, Owen 14 and 76. Man, I'm good. So it's hilarious. They laughed. Even though he spoke about killing his entire team, they understood what it was. Mm. I argue that the journalists now misinterpret that. That Whoopi Goldberg, if he said that now, would say he said to kill his team. And then you and I heard about a Notre Dame coach. Well, hold on. Okay. That's the very okay. the last one. Then about three years ago, the Notre Dame football coach repeated the joke, and it was a completely different environment now. Mm-hmm. And we'll play the uh, – is it uh, Brian Kelly? Looks like him. Yeah, of Notre yeah. Dame. Yeah. yeah. USC rival. He made the joke. Yeah. You said something in your post game interview mm-hmm. after, right after the game of, about executing oh, the entire team. reporter. Just, can you elaborate on that? Oh, it's an old John McKay quote. I was kidding. It was tongue in cheek. It wasn't funny. It's, a, it's an old it's an old John McKay quote that he used after the game. Um, so I was I was talking and and you know making a joke about it. Why it was taken serious. Are you people crazy? I'm sure. Not everyone knows us like knows yeah. you like we do, Brian. Right. Oh, it's a John McKay <laughs> quote that he used after a game. I was stealing one of his old quotes and being funny. I guess nobody likes to be funny anymore. So yeah, if you want to, you know, take me to town on that, please do. It looks so much better when you see the video, too. Oh, wow. Because he's so like, what? That's a reporter going, you said you were going to have your team executed? Oh, my Shut God. Shut the fuck up, what everybody. Stupid whore. Stupid whore. <laughs> Disgusting. Somebody should have slapped. Oh, she never she got that. Take your mom and put them, your mom on these women. Yeah, I'm she, sending her a dildo. She <laughs> needs to get fucked. Oh, uh, no. She needs to put it in her mouth and put some yeah. tape over it. Oh, Jesus. So we don't have to hear her fucking oh, retarded questions. Oh, now, God, here's God. my point. She... For, <laughs> How would a college coach go about executing his team? Oh, please. I, I, you don't think he meant it. Also, have a little fucking football savvy, bitch. I know that's a John McKay line. I'm not a football reporter, but I do understand that is a joke yeah. that has been aired on NFL Network a thousand times. They'll always do this like <sighs> retrospective of funny coaches. and yeah. oh, He has tons of stupid sayings. You know, you can actually find a John McKay like... Uh, trailer thing. It's funny. But the point is, is A, you should know it. B, you should know he didn't mean it. It's a joke. And C, you should shut the fuck up. Yeah. So John McKay said it in 19, you know, 77. Everyone laughed and no one said a word. And now it's 2000, in this case, 21. And we have to take him seriously. That's not a move toward the light. And Whoopi Goldberg is not doing herself or any of her ladies at The View or anyone in, and anyone in, the journalistic profession, you guys are making fucking pompous asses of yourself. You're making an ass of yourself if you believe and repeat shit that you clearly know is false and a joke. What yep. the fuck? Reel it in, everybody. Mock them. Mockery. Uh, well, that's what I'm doing. Let's do it. Do you know mockery? Yeah, mocking somebody. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Yes, it's I a know. good thing. It's More a healthy of that. American More thing. of that. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that. I just think people are so weak, you know. I, I think well, I like for the me, Chinese, it's about weakness. We have a yeah, great wall. Good. You know, we have a great wall to, to make sure the Mongols don't come in. Mm-hmm. They came in anyway, but you have to build a wall first. Right. So you at least like you can come in. It's like, a, come on, come on. I don't have money, but you know. Oh, you think the, you think the wall made the Mongols want to come in? No, it didn't make but It stopped them for a long time. Yeah. Until they got stronger. I, why, why is it a problem to, to build the border better? Like, uh, why is it a problem? People, are you fucking stupid? Like, I just, why are Americans angry that uh, the border needs to be built stronger? Well, Donald Trump talked Firewalls. About a, a, I want the firewalls and machine guns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I you are that. not coming to the country and buy a green card, you have to spend 800K to buy a green card. If you can't afford it, don't come. Hey, I'm with you. Uh, the problem is Trump said he wanted a secure border, and so they... They went. They just did the opposite of whatever. Trump Somebody said. dig a hole from her fucking 
house, like just like her fans, she's gonna freak out. Whoopi's gonna freak out. Whoopi's gonna shoot anybody who comes in. Trust me. Oh, if anyone comes to the Whoopi compound, oh yeah, oh, she's gonna shoot them on the face. We have the uh, best of John McCain <laughs> video. I don't know when he died, but he was he was he was fun. Coach McKay was a one-liner expert. Well, we didn't block him, no. But we made up for it by not tackling. <laughs> he was asked one time after a game, what do you think about the execution of your offensive line? He said, right now I'd probably be in favor of it. I don't think the game is that difficult. It's no more difficult than college ball, huh? Not in my opinion. <laughs> Four national championships, he was inflated with that college experience and he said I can coach the NFL from my armchair. Put down, I'll change this drill. Okay. This looks like a fire drill in a third grade school. I you're gonna, like Coach McKay. He's very run. sarcastic. And you're going to hustle. That's all right. You had a catcher's mitt, you'd have caught it. Well, they can't come out on the field. We never let yeah. a camera in the SEL. Gentlemen, if you don't get that camera out there, I'm going to shove it right up your <laughs> McKay was so conscious of our wireless mic, he actually covered it with his hat when one of his assistants tried to talk to him. There's a cold beer if you'd like one in Mr. Culverhouse's office for the coaches. All right. Anyway, it was a character, won a lot. The uh, Tampa Bay didn't. But now Tampa Bay. Yeah. They're playing. He started a dynasty. Didn't know it. What's the Chinese sport? What uh, what are ping they going pong. Is that it? We play ping pong. Yeah, ping pong is good. Is soccer bigger than ping pong? S- no, s- Chinese people suck at soccer. The Japanese are good, which I hate, but they are good at soccer. I don't know why. Mm. Maybe it's because soccer is savage. Soccer savage? Japanese likes to rape and murder. Mm, and they yeah. are good at it. Yeah, they I would have loved to get a Japanese boyfriend and make my mom angry. Oh, wow. oh yeah. That would be the best. Because to of get the back uh, to her. invasion during yeah, World War? Yeah, I got my Japanese boyfriend. I am set. A Japanese guys. I want Japanese dick. Do you know that? Do you know that history? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, it's another bad. one of those. Well, okay, let's. It, it let's, was bad. Let's, mm-hmm. let, let me just dial you into America and how uh-huh. we work. You know, yeah. we don't like border walls because nobody's illegal and all this other bullshit. I just told you they they think and act like we invented slavery and the you know indigenous and people were yes were peace loving nature right. They, we just when it comes to World War II, you have uh, Japan uh, bombs Pearl Harbor. We lose thousands of people there. Uh, takes comfort women. Does the death marches? If you're a prisoner, you're just killed by malnutrition and dysentery. Uh, the rape of Nan Cook, Nan King, Nan King, Nan King. Three hundred or something. Uh, they they they. They did experiments on, you know, human human experiments and stuff. They were fucking savages. All we know is that uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm. <laughs> That's all we know mm-hmm. uh, about Americans mm-hmm. here. Oh, oh, no. About we Japanese. know Japanese American internment camps. Yes, we do. Yes, know that the too. Camp. We internment know that. camps. We and, know that. And I try to fucking tell people all the time, although obviously I'm not running in any kind of popularity contest, but when <laughs> George Takei is the fucking loudest mouth pussy on the planet, has to chime in, oh, all, he never stops talking about Japanese-American internment camps, and then the other people who are trying to shut everyone down and get everyone canceled never stop talking about McCarthyism, right? Right. Okay, uh, you want everyone who didn't get vaxxed to be put out uh, onto a barge and set on fire. Fine. You want every every cop who didn't want to get vaxxed or doesn't, uh, doesn't agree with COVID lockdowns or protocols, you want them all removed and fired, whatever. Uh, they turned out to be right. McCarthyism, um, communism was evil and caused a lot of death and carnage and killed millions of people. Now, you can disagree with McCarthyism, but... Um, that particular way of governing and communism and those who sympathized with those people were the cause of much strife, many millions of deaths and famine and everything else. Everything you don't want was what that government was. So, again, you can talk about McCarthyism, but what those guys were supporting was horrible. Okay, what we did with them, that's another argument. Well, what they did. And Japanese internment camps, you can say that's horrible, but the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and we're all freaked the fuck out. It wasn't like we just invented it out of whole cloth. 
it was spawn. And you can go, it was wrong. And I'll go, yeah, it was wrong, but it wasn't done because people are evil. It was done because because communism was evil and Pearl Har- Harbor happened 10 minutes ago. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's because Japan was bombed right after they got bombed by America, they withdraw from China. And that's the end of the war for us. Mm-hmm. It was a direct result of China winning the war because yep. Japan was just this hit so hard. They were like, let's go. Yeah, and what was the region they invaded in China? Um, everywhere they yeah. was they are in they, they are in charge of China uh, from uh, the Manchuria, which is Manchuria Middle East. Mostly, uh, they took yeah. Beijing. They they went yeah. But and they uh, I, they got a lot of it. Oh yeah, Japan yeah. was winning. Japan was. A friend winning. of mine's father was held in a uh, Japanese uh, war camp, prison war camp. Oh boy, and he escaped, and uh, and he came here and established a big life for himself and. Uh, He's Chinese, and he would always tell his son, if his son complained about anything, go, are, oh, you, boy. are, you, are you being chased by Chi- Japanese soldiers? Oh, my no? God. No? Okay, you're fine. <laughs> Every time. And whenever my mom comes to my room, it's messy. She goes, did the Japanese invade your room? <laughs> I said, there's a Japanese under my sheet. I'm fucking him. This guy, <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> this guy, was, this guy was, was on the on the run for like three weeks with wow. soldiers on wow. his and dogs and everything, the wow. whole deal. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, so everything. Are you being chased by Japanese soldiers? No? Shut up. <laughs> like, I would be the worst prison guard ever when they're like, somebody got out, now we're going to get the dogs and we got to go out in the swamp and go find them. I'd be like, if the guy got out, killed a bunch of people, then yeah, but if he was just... One guy. A, a combatant in a war where they yeah. kind of make some good points. I mean, we started it by bombing their fucking Pacific fleet. Like, how badly do we need to look for the 20-year-old guy who got roped into a war that he didn't start? Yeah, he was and he's Chinese, sort of right about Chinese oh, he's national, Chinese. Chinese right, national. Oh, better yet. Why? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't ask for any of this right. shit. But the Japanese hated the Chinese, right? Yeah, they yeah. want to. The, because Japan is, I think, during Qing Dynasty, China closed the border. We stopped uh, the communication with the Western world. And the Western, um, you know, Western world is getting so advanced with mm-hmm. technology, with um, everything. And uh, Japan is expanding. Japan is at its best. But they need resources. They have this tiny little pussy island, tiny little island. But they are so smart and powerful. They want resources from China and they don't want to buy it. Because China was close border. Everybody is... Just take it. Yeah. And also the eight nation gave China opiums. China mm-hmm. was just like falling. So it's so easy to go there and rape and murder and take the land. And so we they just learned control. that, that uh, Adam is racist against Asian people. People too. Mm-hmm. I was telling a story about my friend, and he never dreamed I was talking about a Chinese individual. <laughs> yeah, no. because well, he... no, I, I said he was still drawn yeah, into the war through the bombing yes. of Pearl Harbor. But he I, didn't see color. But the opium threat. Right. Which, who do you think is fueling our opium crisis here? Here, I think. Uh, um, do you think China's involved think, with it? I think the government is uh, Chinese being, government. I don't think. I think American government is being so weak. But about do you think uh, the, the Chinese are providing the products that the cartels are bringing up here? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Of course. So just because it's good business. It's, not it's all about wanna, money. It's not because they money. want to reverse the opium wars of the 17th, 18th century. I think century. we hate the British more because they are the people who said it. But for uh, America, Chinese just want money. I just want to make more money. But I think American government, is, we are so weak. Whoever is doing drugs should go to prison. And mm. uh, no, they, yeah, just uh, they, should, they should just be arrested. Well, I, drugs. I think the money's good. And yeah. then the byproduct is all of us just dropping dead and <laughs> being strung out on the streets. It, you know, it's not a real able-bodied fighting force. All we do is argue about race yeah. in this country, and they must fucking love it. I mean, the Chinese and the drug cartels, Chinese just from COVID, uh, and the drug cartels must be laughing their asses off that we all we do is sit and fight about you know, the border or, yeah. you know, when we say, well, maybe COVID came from a from a lab leak. They go, oh, please, you're racist. I mean, they got to be laughing their fucking smooth tan asses off. <laughs> we we laugh. It's hilarious. Americans argue about the uh, um, bullshit. Like, it seems don't even do. matter. That's and right. And that matters, do. you don't give a fuck. That's right. Like, there's the homelessness in homeland of America. You are spending money to help other people to fight their war. Fuck their war. Save your own people. What's wrong? Oh, you're talking about Ukraine? Everything. Everything. That's yeah, just all like we do you is don't, argue over Like, Biden, shit. you don't have money. Your money, you should fucking take care of your own people. Like, yes. you don't have money. You're old and you're tired. You have zero money. Yeah. And people also, yeah. well, he's people got who, the stuff Hunter gave him. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. And we have and minus 12, 12 trillion or something. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, yeah, God. yeah, no. I, the whole border argument is even the dumbest thing. I've said many times, what if we heard that Canada was building a wall and going to be very stout, which they are. They are very, already. Very, and, mm-hmm. and then I my, my answer is, well, that's their prerogative yeah. because they're a yeah. nation yeah. and they don't want people wandering yeah. into their nation. So good, good for Canada. Korean so that, border, I, you know, in well, China. Yeah, Adam. Like in China, like the North Koreans wants to run to China and then escape North Korea. There is a border, and if you come, they shoot them. And then right. if you have money, you can bribe the Chinese police, and you mm-hmm. can actually escape to Thailand and mm-hmm. get free. But you know, if Thailand, uh, yeah, if as I said, just you can come to America, but you just have to you know contribute buy a green card. Mm-hmm. It's only eight hundred thousand dollars. Eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred k. It is your whole fucking family. Uh, you can get. Yeah. Just. I just. Uh, I just don't believe people should come illegally. Nah. You should not. It's. It's. It's a country. It's a legal country. I can't uh, do, get a DOI. I go to prison. Why should the people just? Uh, why should Jose dig a hole and come? Like I. I have to. How about like, the? How about the robberies and the the the? What do they call them? The snatch and grabs. Smash. Smash right. and grabs. I think uh, uh, people should not be doing illegal shit. You know, Who, Listen, whoever is stealing. I, I I've told. Uh, yeah, I agree. But I, I I was telling everyone what would solve this. And Byron, you you can find it. I liked it. It should be on the computer. There's footage of a guy with a paint gun shooting a bear, and I said, at a certain point, we need paintballs. <laughs> and and it stops people from doing what they're doing because we have a situation <laughs> so he's now. He's able to stop the bear with a paint gun, you're saying. I'm saying when you see the bear, you'll see, forget about it being a bear. It could be someone looting. Yeah. It could be some crazy Palestinian supporter or something taken to the streets in New York. You get a few pops in the ribs with a paintball. You stop and you just go the other way. And, and, and it's non-lethal. I've been shot with a paintball, fucking stings, and we all, everyone, it's- Well, it's, they have pellet guns now, too. They'll get you at 300 yards. Just do the paintball theory yeah. with everyone. You're breaking into a Walmart, pop, pop, pop. The, you hit the first three guys in the crowd, the rest go right back out. Th- this is footage I've been wanting to show for a while. Sorry. Guy turns on the lights. He's a bear. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Two shots with paint. Now- a bear's got a thick hide yeah, on him. Yeah. And he, that guy was 60 feet away. Yeah. But that bear took two shots with a paintball, and he doesn't know what's going on. All he knows is he just felt something that stung, and he's going the other direction. And I'm saying school fights are fucking out of hand. Kids are just d- taking over and fighting big groups. Of, people are jumping into Walmarts and, con- and stores. They're taking over 7-Elevens. Uh, Get the fucking paintballs out. All the fucking pro-Palestinian bullshit agitators have taken to the street. They're blocking off the Holland Tunnel in New York. Get the fucking paintball. Just start popping them. That's it. You ruined your sweater. You have a welt on, under your under your T-shirt. That's it. And, and I know all the assholes on the left would go, what? You have to understand. It's like, listen, do not lay in the middle of the street in front of the Holland Tunnel blocking off traffic for people trying to get to the airport or possibly a hospital for for an emergency surgery or something. Don't do it, and you won't get shot with a paintball. Do not break into a fucking Walmart and start looting, and you won't get shot with a paintball. Do not fucking have a huge gang fight in the auditorium of a high school, and you won't get shot with a paintball. It's the, a simple way to do it. The great thing about the paintball is it brings back the shame aspect of it. Right. You are <laughs> covered in paint. This, paint this, and it's it, called the scarlet splatter. Yeah, and say you're yeah. a, say you're a Tossin thirteen, fourteen year old he kid. Moved, he, he was moving. He was on the move. The scar- <laughs> look at the scarlet splatter. Uh, okay. uh, Go ahead. Really Go ahead. Now. I'm still thinking about it. Go ahead. It's really good. Thank you. Now. Go um, um, yeah, there's 14, 15 year olds. They do eventually have to go home to dinner, and there may be a mother who's very, very pissed. Mm, yeah. And maybe when your friends are getting shot with a paper, you're like, ooh, you know what? My mom's going to kick my ass. Yeah. Mm. Not doing it. Yeah. That bear got hit and just got hit again and just hightailed it. Yeah, it, it works. I think it works well. It would work. I, yeah. I have some more China questions. Can I? Can I About paintball? Not paintball necessarily. That paintball in China? It's, uh yes, but we use ro- we just use a tank and just like, take real bullets. Okay. Yeah, tank just roll over. Okay, you can yeah. stay. Okay. <laughs> so 
in China, they built a replica of Paris. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and like like a replica of, of Paris, Paris with the Eiffel Tower, the everything. And Wait, people, how much of Paris? Uh, it must be like four or five square miles, something like that. Yeah, like uh, if you shoot a movie there, you think you are in Paris. You're in Paris. Wow, it's a lot yeah. of things. It's yeah. not. It's not a. It's not a front. It's through and through. People live there, work there. It's there. Is that it? I guess so. You can. I like the. Yeah. The Chinese like, apartments in the right. background, but you mm-hmm. see part of it is, is Paris. Yeah. A- and m- now I saw some. Uh, Footage that suggested that it was sort of empty and they weren't able to. It was sort of a an idea that never took hold. Mm-hmm. Then I saw a video with a Frenchman, an American, I think a Swiss kid. They go there to investigate what's going on. First, first thing is the French guy goes, "This is exactly. I mean, this is. Ex- I feel like I'm home. This is ex- mm-hmm. the restaurants, the food, everything exactly." But the other thing is, so evening comes all around and all these Chinese people go out in the streets and start celebrating and partying and bringing food and having this great time. And there was a one Chinese woman they were speaking to spoke English. They were saying, like, well, is this – I mean, I guess it's great here in China, right? And I started thinking, did, the, is, did somebody put somebody up to this to create footage to look like there's something good going on here? Or is it really a good quality of life that's going on in oh. this – it's it, called a Wenhua Xiaozheng, little culture, little town. And uh, I think uh, um, six, seven years ago, Chinese government uh, was trying to basically uh, boost the economy mm-hmm. with, um, with tourism. Mm-hmm. So it, within of, China, tourism within China. Within China. Yes, yeah. all of the little um, uh, mayors and they have uh, they have basically they have to f- compete and fight uh, to build a culture center I that's see. to attract tourists. Like if it's like uh, in Guilin, the mountains, uh. they have the bamboo little boat and the all the women dress up like uh, they are two thousand years ago, mm-hmm. walk around the, on the street like uh, it's back in the days. Interesting. And then Misty, some people don't Misty. have any creativity; they would uh, create uh, London and Paris, but uh, they don't have a plan. Business plan. They have the money to build it. Then uh-huh. they don't have business plan to actually marketing and get it. So it dies there, but mm. it's still there. And also the apartments, like uh, the square footage is not like modern China. They need more room, not like as they don't I want to I heard cute. they were tearing down a lot of the buildings they thought people are going to. They overdid. It, those yeah, the, they overdid the, the, things like that. But but my question is, were the, were, did some Chinese Communist Party PR firm send all those people out into the streets to show the Westerners a good time? Or is that the way it literally is every night and everyone's happy in those little cultural centers? Uh, I think people are just uh, – people. Uh, there's the government funding. So whoever built that, uh, they got they got paid. They got a lot of money. So, so they're relatively doesn't matter, happy. It doesn't matter they they have business or not. Like they just already got the cash in their pocket because their city got chosen to build that. Then they would uh, pay everybody a lot of money. To build that. So, so if you run a restaurant it. in Paris, China, mm-hmm. uh, you're running a restaurant in Paris, China. Yes. And you just do that. Okay. You just do that. Yeah. And you have a very good like a okay. rent control situation okay. because it's funded by the government. Mm-hmm. So you you pay it, like it 10%. It looked rather appealing, Adam. I don't know. You pay 10% of what you have. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's happy because uh, they their city got chosen to build that. Um, I was picturing when you're talking about the. <clears throat> village with the bamboo boats and yes. the two thousand year old yeah. Chinese ladies. I I was picturing them calling every tourist Mr. Eddie's father. <laughs> I think she was Japanese, I think. I'm oh, Mrs. Sure. Livingston. Yes. God damn it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> she, was a, she was a war bride. <laughs> it had to be some Chinese war. No, it's Japanese war bride. You're right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a reference to an old sitcom. Living color? No. no. Mr. Eddie's father Mr. was, Eddie's father. Uh, was oh, Mrs. Shit. Livingston. Oh, shit. It's, it was Eddie's father. The courtship of Eddie's father. Eddie's father. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You could sing the song, Drew, right? Hey, would everybody meet my best friend? How's it going to that? Uh, no, 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 no. People, uh, let me tell you about my best friend. Okay. Oh. He's a one... Boy, cuddly toy, something yeah, to the uh, thing. Uh, I just got the tune. Tell you about so much fun. Yeah. Whether we're talking man to man or we're talking son to son. <laughs> this is weird kind of Michael weird Jackson should sing that. Yeah, he should have. And it was uh, uh, Bill Bixby walking around with this little kid on his shoulders at the beach, oh. right? It's, oh. I oh. fucking hated that. Oh. I'm sitting there watching that opening montage, and I look at my dad sitting on the sofa <laughs> waiting to die, and I'd go, how come we never do these things? How come I'm not your best friend? I wish I had Bill Bixby for dad. 
That would have been awesome. Yeah, there it, I, is. it was probably I, you can figure out who wrote the theme to uh, Eddie. Uh, sorry, courtship uh, of courtship of Eddie's, of Eddie's oh. father, but. I think it was one of those Gilbert O'Sullivan guys or one of those, um, remember those like hippie 70s uh, dudes who like uh, uh, cats in the cradle guy, yes. you know, my boy was just like, yes. I think it was one of those guys. Yeah. Oh, you can play it. We'll play it. Sorry. People let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm hearted person who loved me till the end. People let me tell you about my best friend. He's a one all shit me my dad would have never done <laughs> what happened to the kid this kid's all ended up bad a punk band or yeah. something all those kids from the 70s sitcoms not good yeah it never worked out Written and performed by Harry Nilsson oh, Harry Nilsson wow. wow Harry Nilsson yeah forgot that there's a great documentary about him out there. <laughs> Chow Ying, you can go wow. down with fucking Harry I love Nilsen. him. This is great. I know. Who? He uh, wrote a famous song called You're Breaking My Heart, You're Tearing It Apart, So Fuck You. Oh, he mm. did? Yes. I didn't know that That's was nice. his song. I got Dawson, help me out. I, this that, is a good song. That wasn't his biggest song. No, but it was, it but was it, his it, comedic true song. Now. Yeah. I, yeah. He sort of, he was really quite a well, anyway. There were like five of these guys, and I couldn't I couldn't separate them. I couldn't figure out if he was the guy. He who, he was with the Beatles, Harry Nielsen. He, what was, oh. he used to hang out with? I think John something Denver. I knew that you didn't know. Uh, a song That's, that Drew knew. You must have had a roommate uh, in college. But who I had I, that album. Uh, no, my cousin introduced me to it. But but more importantly, I. Was kind of a fan of his. He's the lime and the coconut guy too, right? Yeah. And um, and I watched a documentary once on him, and it was fascinating who he actually was. It just it, he was quite a little genius. All right, now anyway, let's be fair to our guest. Let's All talk right. about Pink Lady. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't know Pink Lady and Jeff? <laughs> um, Pink you lady? don't know the the phenomenon known as were they Japanese or Chinese? God damn it! Pink lady, you're a racist, Dad. Let's face it. I, had, I was nine. I have they no were all part of um, China, you know, Japan, Korea. They are all from China. They were huge, but they, that's a. In, it's sensation. actually an important thing. So oh, I, shit, I, I had a Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had a really know. good friend, a really good uh, friend of mine in residency who was a Chinese guy, and he goes, and he was Chinese from China. He'd only been in this country about 10 years, and he said, yeah, you understand Asia, it's just the way Chinese people look at it is there's this Chinese guy that went over here and set up Japan, Chinese guy that went over here and set up, <laughs> Chinese mm. guy that went over here and set up Korea, yeah. and that's, right. that's the history of Asia. Yeah, that's, that is actually true. <laughs> so, yeah, so. that's true. All right, Dawson's got some news queued up, right? We should take ourselves a break. We'll come back and get into some news right after this. Stamps.com. New Year's always brings some surprises, but not postal increases. That's predictable, but not with Stamps.com. They've helped businesses like yours save time, save money for over 25 years. Up to 89% off U.S. Postal and UPS services. All you need is your computer and a printer. If you need a package to be picked up, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. We've been using these guys for a million years. We send out books. We send out merch. Everything we use, and we use their scale as well, is Stamps.com. So, Take a chunk out of your mailing and shipping costs this year with stamps.com. Use the promo code ADAM for a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale, which we use all the time over here. You don't want to overpay. No commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter ADAM. In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Have a hot towel on his face at a barber shop with a cigar sticking out. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right, Dawson in studio. Jiang is walking back into studio in a second. Drew's 
texting? Not texting. I'm, it's a prescription problem. Prescription, problem. working yeah. on his phone. That's yeah. fine. Multitasking. Multitasking. Yeah. So uh, loves that when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only love the fact that you don't know what you sound like when you're doing it. <laughs> That's the comedy of it. But yeah. uh, all right, go ahead. What do we got, Dawson? All right, let's talk about the NFL. Um, lots of... Bad games this weekend. Uh, seven seed Packers stampeded the Cowboys. Texans uh, crushed the Browns. Chiefs over Dolphins and cold, cold Kansas City. But the big game, uh, Lions over Rams at home by one point. How do you feel about it, boss? Uh, I'm very philosophical because the Lions are a snake bit organization. Mm-hmm. They never do any real winning in the playoffs. Um, Eric Kramer, ex-quarterback for the Lions, is a friend. I knew he was going out there. They'd flown him out there to support, you know, so I was kind of hoping that he he didn't get disappointed. Uh, Stafford was a Lion, you know, and uh, Goff was a a Ram. Mm -hmm. And I always liked Goff. I always thought he seemed like a mellow dude. And, you know, he went to the Lions and they went like, I don't know, 2 and 12 or something. And then... Stafford came here and we won the Super Bowl. And so I thought that had to fucking sting pretty sure. bad for golf to get thrown onto this losing franchise. And it's a lot of that. Geez, why can't you guys win the big one? Well, you leave and we get this guy in who's on a losing franchise. And now we do win the Super Bowl with the Rams a few years ago. So I was like, anyway, this turns out I'm happy uh, for the turnout. I'll tell you what I wasn't happy for. Drew? Yeah. You done with your phone? <laughs> no, I'm going. trying to sign into this prescription program. Uh, just do it during the break. Come on. All right. All right. Here's what happened to me. I, I realized, I, look, the schedule got moved around. Mm-hmm. They canceled the game because of weather, and they moved some stuff around, and they're a little out of sequence. They used to just put the playoff games on on Sunday during the day. Now there's a nighttime playoff game. I made dinner plans with somebody right in the middle of the Rams game mm-hmm. that I, I didn't check the schedule. Mm-hmm. I thought we would be watching the football during the day. Then we'd go out at night at 7.30 and have dinner, right. and we'll, we'll have seen all the games by then. But I, the Rams were the late game. So I'm watching with my son. It's about 7.15. The game's all knotted up, back and forth, and we're going into the fourth quarter, and the guy I'm going to dinner with shows up at my house. <laughs> so then I say to my son, do not tell me how this game ends. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk into my office. I'm going to record it. I'm going to go out to dinner, and I'm going to come back, and uh, then I'm just going to watch the fourth quarter. And uh, we went to the restaurant, and the restaurant had it up on the TV. Right. Mm-hmm. But as you as you walk through the restaurant, you have to sort of go through the bar, the and there's people house. eating. No, no. <laughs> there were people, the same kind of place. Yeah. People are sitting there watching it up on the TV. Right. Uh, and there was one big guy, looked like he played some high school ball, sitting there alone at the bar. You know, it's like eating his dinner and having his drinks, watching TV. I said, okay, this guy's come to watch the game. We then went to the back part of the restaurant, sat in the Smart booth, away from the could not hear anything, could not see anything, and enjoyed... Like a longish dinner, maybe an hour and a half. The game had long over by that point. Uh, I then walked back around and saw the TVs were blank. The game was over. Most everyone had filed out, except for the one big guy at the end of the bar. And as we are walking out, he went, we should have won that one. Uh, ah! yeah, there you go. This guy's not from Detroit. <laughs> there you go. And uh, he didn't say anything other than we should have won that one. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, fucking Rams lost. And yeah. whatever I was trying to do did not happen mm-hmm. because one guy said one thing course, out loud. And, and now I knew, I knew the outcome. And we have a long history of that in my family. My father, uh, growing up my dad worked shift work so he was either uh, 3 to 11 11 to 7 or 7 to 3 and it was 7 days a week you know 2 days off whatever 5 days 2 days and he would always record the games but his rule was you know you turn off and this was easy to do 30 years ago Mm -hmm. turn off don't listen to the radio you can come back you can watch the game but the one time I was coming back from working a ski event on Super Bowl Sunday and I recorded the game, and I somehow managed, and I had to, you know, lay over in different airports. I managed to get through two different airports, well, three counting getting home, and mm-hmm. the game was well over. Managed to do it without hearing one thing about the game, and then I called my girlfriend, and the first thing she said 
was the Patriots did it. And I'm like, oh. I hate you. I feel Goodbye. like I was right there with Dawson during this whole experience. Mm -hmm. it, 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 ribbons were drawn here. Mm. Beautiful. So, uh, yes, they uh, rescheduled a game, boss. Uh, I to, was, by the way. I was thinking back on Grandpa Al Lewis, who was from my childhood from the so Monsters. Grandpa from the Monsters was a guy that Adam knew. Do you know the Monsters are? No. No. It's all right. It's okay. No. But... Okay. You know a I never watch the monster monsters. <laughs> yeah, but you know well, they make I know, movies. I know they Wait, exist. You have to yeah. know because they make modern day movies. Yeah. I couldn't point monsters. him out of a lineup. You couldn't, Grandpa. Okay, if he's the old guy, yeah, then I yeah. could. The vampire. Well, it's got the word Grandpa yeah. in yeah. his title. The, well, I, if you showed me the Adams Family Grandpa and the Munsters Grandpa and asked me to pick which is which, I wouldn't know. I don't the, think the Adams family had a grandpa. The, he means oh, Uncle okay. Fester. Well, means Uncle oh, Uncle Fester. Fester. Oh, but, you but would the, know. You, there was a grandma. There was a grandma in okay. the Adams family. But he means Uncle Fester and and grandpa. No, we, he we doesn't. should put him. I, he he would know the difference between Uncle Fester and and grandpa. The point is, I've I never think. watched a single episode of either of those shows. It's a private child. Go on. Yes. Either way, I will continue. <laughs> Now, yes, please. Now that it's clear that no one's ever seen anything <laughs> I'm talking about ever, uh, he would sit there. And he, you would watch, if you watch a football game with Grandpa Al, he'd have the sound all the way down. And he would complain that these announcers, they don't know any. He was so angry. Wow. That he couldn't watch a football game with the sound up. That's it would bother me to watch it with the sound down. Huh. And I was sitting with my son just thinking, we're enjoying the game and the announcers. You know what I mean? And he used to turn it all the way down and get angry. What was he like out of makeup and character and stuff well he, he hit me <laughs> nice he chewed tobacco in the house and <laughs> spat it on the floor Shit. at a wooden floor oh my wow God. he would dip and just like uh, onto the maybe floor. he's chinese uh, <laughs> <laughs> he he was what, angry what kind, of, what kind of floor the hardwood wooden hardwood was he, 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 he was was he related to a friend of yours or something or i mean who how, what was the connection I was friend with his son. His son, okay. Is wow. he related to a friend of mine? No, 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 no. I mean, I didn't know how you. No, I you know. know I was friends with his yeah. son. Yeah, he was. He was mean, mean as shit. And this guy was in the monsters. He was mean <laughs> and in the monsters. Yeah, but the monsters were lovable, Dawson. Okay. He, yeah, he's he. I, I try to imagine that. It is, it's hard to. Uh, it's odd. He was crotchety wow. and angry. And this was a few years, it was 10 years after the Monsters or so, right? Yeah, prob yeah. probably. Yeah. Probably was out of work. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. He did Car 54, Where Are You, oh, I think. Right. And then he did the Monsters. He was working. And those guys got no residuals back then. That's the, the Gilligan's Island. Now he's just living in Van Nuys with Oof. his fucking wife. We always had the eye patch on because she had some sort of thing with her eye going on all the time. <laughs> she felt like a nurse. And he's just chewing dip and spitting it on the floor. <laughs> oh, my God. And he's fucking angry. Oh, my God. And he's yelling at the TV set. I mean, he, he smacked me, you know? Oh, I mean, wow. he, he didn't. Somebody else's kid. That was back when that happened. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you could yeah. do it. Would, could. would uh, Ray's mom ever hit you? No. She seems like no. that kind of. Like she, she would, would hit it. him, yeah. maybe, but only because he was doing something <laughs> crazy to her. You know what I mean? Like. It's, Putting his dick in her, her friend's <laughs> ear, you know, like that. You know, oh, what do you like that? <laughs> and I don't think it reflected well on her that her friend was on the phone, sitting in her like parlor, and he put his dick in her open ear. Oh wow! I mean, I wish he put his dick in your ear when the fat guy says something. You uh -huh. won't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. one one of the football games, as Adam mentioned, uh. was uh, rescheduled over the weekend. It's actually being played right now as we record this. It's mm -hmm. uh, the Steelers in Buffalo. Um, a lot of people of were upset because yeah. they rescheduled it. Uh, I think they should have played in the snow. A lot of people thought they should have. Because it's Buffalo. It was in Buffalo. It must be exactly. In Buffalo yeah. or hardy people. Yeah. Um, I looked and then, it up. They did cancel the game 10 years earlier. Yeah. Okay. They, it, it happened it, rarely, but once every 10 years they'll cancel a game because of weather. The I mean, Bills put out uh, on their Twitter, they put out a picture of what the field looked like. I was going like to say, the, they right really around, yeah. get feet of snow. Yeah. I mean, it would be difficult. And uh, yeah. we'll put that up. Um, it doesn't look like you could play a football game. If you had a three-point stance, you would disappear. In this, and listen to this, yeah. too. Well, you can see the wind blowing. Oh, yeah. So... 
Okay, I get it. Yeah. You're not going to get many camera shots. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't even know how you can see the field and be able to play in that. So that that kind of makes sense. But a lot of people were saying, you know, if 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 anyone complained about this, a lot of people were saying, oh, you want people to die? People could die. Oh, here we go. Getting out there. Yeah. And, um, Maybe the coach wants to execute the whole team. Yeah, right. yeah they have right. good insurance, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, our friend, money. our friend Dave Damashek, who we're going to see later this week uh, for a show next week, uh, he had this uh, nice answer to um, people got in there. They, they so people got in there to do their jobs and are still alive. Yeah. So, so basically, they sent. They sent uh, all the people from B- B- Buffalo volunteered for twenty bucks. Twenty bucks get through the the snowstorm, or you know, at least through all the shitload of snow, and then go clean up the stadium and get ready for the game. Um, but Damashek, I, I think he had the right take on it. Yeah, nobody died. Was it twenty bucks? I think that I heard on the news that they made twenty dollars. I was so weird because first off, twenty is zero now. Yeah. I heard, I was watching the news and they're like fifty bucks an hour. Mm, really? Well, it's weird to it's, make twenty, maybe twenty an hour, making twenty bucks to shovel a stadium. Twenty seems, an hour. I swear, weird. in passing, I heard twenty bucks. Oh, you heard. All right. Well, oh, we'll wow. see if we can figure out what they got paid. And then some guy took his shirt off and slid down the flume right. with all the snow in it and everything. Right. Yeah, people are much more durable than we'd like to. Think and also cold doesn't give you colds. No, ladies. No, no. no. So, so uh, really, any any thoughts on the cancellation of the game? Because I got I got one, and that's well to be okay. Go ahead. I think that if they they I think they could have done the game. I just think that they would have made fifteen percent of the money that they would have. Oh, and it came down to money. Well, okay. The games you remember, they they'll have the ice bowl and the fog bowl. They mm-hmm. played a game in the fog once. You couldn't see anything. You remember mm-hmm. that? Not you, Joey. But, but he's remember exciting. That true? I don't remember that. But but Super Bowl two was in the mud, right? Or three. I One of well, them was a complete I, I, mud bowl. I, you, you they they have these novelty games yeah. and it's and it's insane and it makes and they had a windy, super windy one yeah. that couldn't it. It does kind of make fun. Well, that first New England it win fun. was in the snow. It was snowing, right? Or yeah. The second New England? Yeah. yeah. They'll play in the snow for sure. Yeah. And then you have the you have the game with New England and I think Miami where they got the ex-con to drive the snowblower tractor out and clear the spot so the kicker could kick the game-winning field goal because you can't kick it off the snow. Then there's the problem where the other team – in the snow game, because they got the kick, the field goal is going to win the game. The other team will call timeout sometimes, yeah. Yeah. and all that does is give them an extra couple minutes to clear all the linemen to kick all the snow away and clear spots so yeah. they can can kick it. I am generally for it. I say you play like the weather, you know, like the um, mailmen through night or sleet, sleet of snow, snow. Yeah. and all, all that, yeah. or dark of night. But I, I will can. Cons- Oh, it's twenty bucks an hour. I will concede. See, well, an hour everything. makes more sense. That's yeah. how you know. Yeah, that's how you can be right. I all heard the time. twenty bucks. I didn't hear twenty bucks an hour, but it I wasn't heard twenty passing. bucks too. Okay, but I process. Yeah, well, you're okay. smart. There you go. Everyone can be smart. You just there have you to go. think who would do this, and then you mm-hmm. go, "That would never." All right, twenty bucks an hour. So here's the point. Um, I like it, but I will concede that the weather gets so bad at a certain point that it's not practical to right. play the game. Sure. And maybe it got to that threshold. And, and maybe the mm. networks had something to say. And, maybe a regular game. And, and I, I, I thought, oh, Kathy Hochul. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. got a chick governor. Oh, she's yeah. such a puss. Oh, oh, bet she did this. Help. But I looked it up, and they did it ten years before this on oh. another. It, it happens periodically, so we they can't really. Snow. Huh? That they play in the snow. Or they cancel. I beg your pardon. They cancel for the snow. Yeah. Beg your pardon. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Okay. All right. We'll move it on to more uh, weather-related stories. You know, the, uh, the Iowa caucuses are happening mm-hmm. this evening as we record this. Um, now, no one really knows what the Iowa caucuses are. Um, or how they work. Yeah, they, no one uh, knows. I, I it's think mysterious. They pass around a magical hat. And if Chris Christie sees his shadow, hmm. then 
Zhao Ying wins. Yeah, Stop Ted Cruz can go to Mexico without <laughs> if press coverage. Zhao Ying's club, don't do that one, Don. <laughs> yeah. She just sent me a little note. Chris. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Christie's a fat one, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Christie's a fat one. He finally dropped out. Yeah. Um, so the people left standing are Trump, who's leading by many, but yeah. we'll see because there's a question I want to ask you. There's a couple, mm. couple ways to look at this. You got Trump, you got Nikki Haley, who's surging in the polls. DeSantis kind of staying there. He's Trump Jr. Uh, and Vivek, um, I like the guy. He's I think canvassing he, the whole state, though. He's going I, I, everywhere. Yeah, I think I think if I had to make a prediction, I think he'll do better than most people think. That would make sense. Because there's a younger crowd mm-hmm. after him, and younger people care and, less and, about the cold weather. And Musk just said that hard work always has some significant <clears throat> impact. Yes, and Iowans— mm care about that mm-hmm. i love a fake i and also love the fact that he has a crazy name <laughs> and he has a crazy his his let me tell you how this country works mm-hmm. we have and this is how i grew up we understand like we go white mexican black chinese but mostly just japanese and we just lump everyone in together uh vivek ramaswamy we don't even have a place for that in our head. That would just fall under other and weird. (laughs) That's how I grew up. And the fact that he never brings his race up and nobody ever brings his race up is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if he was on the left, I think CNN would never stop fucking talking about it. Sure. But he's not on the left. He's on the right. So they call him a white supremacist. Right. He doesn't milk it. Yeah. He's he doesn't the, care the about it. Ramaswamy yeah. face of black right. white supremacy. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> right. And so I like that part. And I like him. And I like that he attacks the news. He's what you used to call time. the uh, Johnny Quest villain. Race. Villain, yeah, right. Yeah, well, you didn't know. If you watched Johnny Quest, you didn't know what race the villain was. Uh, Do you think it would work if he had an accent? Yeah, I, interesting. I think this country. Uh, here's what I, I, know, I shouldn't say I think this. I know this. The person, the race, whatever the race, whatever the color, male or female, the second they open their mouth and start talking about ideas, you either agree with them or you disagree with them. Um, I am white, I'm heterosexual, I'm tall, and I'm male, and I don't agree with the motherfucking thing Joe Biden says. Nothing. I think he's an idiot. I think he's dangerous. I, I know he's a liar. I think he's compromised sort of mentally now. And God knows the depths of what him and his son were up to in terms of this country and, you know, pay for play. Okay. But he looks like me. But I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I also hear Kamala Harris talk, who's a female, who's half Indian and half Jamaican or whatever she is. And I don't agree with the motherfucking thing that Dingbat says either. But then there's Larry. You're a racist. Then there's Larry Elder, who's a black man, and uh, I agree wholeheartedly with everything Larry Elder says. The second someone starts spitting out ideas, you either agree or you mm-hmm. disagree. That's how everybody is mm-hmm. fucking wired. The second your team starts a black quarterback and he starts throwing touchdowns, you love your black quarterback. That's mm-hmm. or he could throw picks. In which case, you would hate your black quarterback, but it's only because of his performance. We're all wired that way. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a selfish wiring. Mm-hmm. Race doesn't make, doesn't, you know, me going, well, look, Vivek Ramaswamy's nothing like me, has no heritage that I have. I agree with all those ideas, but I'm going to support Biden with his high taxes and his poorest <laughs> border and his $8 uh, a gallon gas because he looks like me. Well, that doesn't serve me. I'll pay for his son's uh, Coke. I'll here's pay a, for his son's Coke. There's yeah. a big point you're making here is that you say that no heritage, you don't identify with any heritage, but all Vivek is out there with is the American heritage. Yeah. So you do connect with him and agree with him. On the that's, heritage, that's and that's a, the that's heritage my he keeps that's, promoting. But, yes, yes, that's, that's the point you're making around an idea, not around yeah. a heritage, yeah. a, a, yeah. a biological heritage. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So it's supposed to be minus thirty degree wind chill, and the way this works, they put everybody in a high school gymnasium or something. You got to mm-hmm. go to a place. You got to sit in a room for what could be hours and listen to representatives of opposing political parties or uh, Mm -hmm. political candidates to say everything they got to say, who knows how long this is going to take. This is the caucus. Yeah. And, and it seems like a real shitty way to vote, dude, just Mm -hmm. write down a, a name and let's be done. But I think 
that it's going to come down to who the hardiest are. Well, let me say something. The 30 below zero, is that really, is that the actual that's temperature? That's the wind chill. Wind chill. When you get down bel- into that range, like I was in Minneapolis once, it was 50 below with the wind chill. Mm. You cannot go outside. Mm. You just can't. And so- I've I, been in that. Have you ever farted in that? No. <laughs> Freeze wow. a solid. Wow. <laughs> what happens if you lick it? <laughs> oh, your tongue will stick to it. <laughs> I tried. Wow. I farted a block- a solid block of frozen <laughs> fart. That's fantastic. When the wind chill gets under 40, yeah, yeah. your farts will wow. be solid. Yeah, we can a, sell that, Adam. You know that, right? Hmm? We can sell your fart, frozen fart in a jar. Wow. I know. Oh, that. I was so going to do it, and then that auction. bitch on the internet snaked me on it. And is it uh, is it brown? Uh, you know, it was a whiteout, so... <laughs> <laughs> Mayonnaise, mayonnaise, No, don't be a weirdo, Drew. It was a frozen <laughs> fart. I didn't shit. God damn it, Drew. You're a man of science. You should know that. But it froze, you know? Wow. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a factor in people going, because if some guy's gaseous, mm. and I, he's got to get from the car to the caucus. I had to have somebody break it off, too. Yeah. It wasn't. It was... Yeah. Wow, it, it didn't stuck just your drop. asshole. Well, Woo! yeah. Did it, it did a little piece of colon form, too? A little no, bl- I mean, picture like a stalactite. Or no, I get that, but it, but how far in? It was just stick to the rim. Just just, just sort of got a little de- desquamation, like a... Well, only the, only the cold only made it so far up. I, right, 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 right. I see, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, frozen farts. Xiao Ying loves the fart humor. You can see that. In, <laughs> it's got to get below. The windshield's really got to be a factor. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Nope. All right, wait. Let's take Did a quick it break. We got No, it okay, froze yeah. solid. <laughs> <laughs> I keep asking these dumb questions. You got questions. close now? A little bit of evaporation you brought when you brought oh, yeah, back during the that... spring thaw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course, people months later, yeah. I'm sure when it was thawing. You got a lot of great opportunities for <laughs> gagging people with that. <laughs> All right, quick break. Come back, do the news right after this. The wellness company I love these guys. Drew loves these guys. They have a medical emergency kit. Almost 90% of pharmaceuticals are produced outside the U.S. Will you have what your family needs during the next crisis? I don't know. Let's prepare. With recent outbreaks of respiratory illness in China and white lung syndrome in the U.S., you need to be prepared. The Wellness Company's Medical Emergency Kit, 8 life-saving medications, including amoxicillin, z pack and ivermectin, along with a guidebook for safe use. The Wellness Company's Chief Medical Board, Dr. Drew, we all know Dr. Drew Pinsky, and then uh, Dr. Peter McCullough, who was a right about everything during COVID as well, and other truth-telling doctors participate as well. They're rooted in empowering you to take control of your health. The Wellness Company's Medical Emergency Kit, from tick bites to COVID to bioterror events, every scenario is covered. Prepare with the Wellness Company. Am I right, Dawson? Go to twc.health slash ACS and grab your medical emergency kit right now. That's twc.health slash ACS. Code ACS saves you 10% at checkout. Don't wait until you need it. Take control of your health today with the Wellness Company's medical emergency kit. Oh, oh, O'Reilly. Don't miss Do It Right deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. How long has it been since you've changed your spark plugs? Yeah, that's a good question. Replacing your spark plug can, can restore efficiency and performance to your vehicle. Get better gas mileage as well. And right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, get a $12 O'Reilly gift card after rebate when you purchase four or more select AC Delco Iridium spark plugs. Maintain your performance and fuel mileage with new spark plugs from O'Reilly Auto Parts. You can also improve visibility with their new wiper blades. Right now, save 12 bucks on a pair of rain Rugged XL wiper blades, plus get two times O rewards points. An extra large profile and premium features make rugged XL blades the right choice for extreme weather and driving durability. The professional parts people will even install your new pair of wiper blades for free. From spark plugs to wiper blades and more, save now with Do It Right Deals in-store at O'Reilly Auto Parts or O'ReillyAuto.com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. 
Ace, it's Jim from Detroit. I think before you die, you ought to head somebody off at the pass. Get it on, bitches. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. All right, Jerry and Summers is hanging out. Dates, you can go to, I'll spell it out, Summers you can do, but uh, J-I-A-O-Y-I-N-G, Summers.com for all the live dates. She's a great stand-up comedian. Tiger Milf with Jow Ying Summers is the podcast. Dr. Drew's hanging out. And uh, Dawson's got some more news. Uh, yeah, you know, there was a award show called the Critics' Choice Awards. Yes. Um, which aren't they all? Yes, yeah. and the, um, the uh, stupid stinkers who are dumb, don't read book are offended by all the jokes. Yes. People are offended by the jokes? Yeah, the singers, like the 17 year old, gorgeous little pretty girl who can sing, like, oh my guy's so offended. Who hosted it? Yeah. Uh, there's a comedian. I don't, I don't know which one did it. I only know about the food they served. Oh. Is that Chinese? Yeah, no. It oh, was. Chinese food. It was served in a bag. Oh, and Chelsea it was pizza Handler. In a hot bag. Chelsea Hold Handler on. hosted it. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Go. It's going to come up. And so a 17-year-old singer didn't like Chelsea Handler's jokes? Yeah, she uh, she should have lived a life. I mean, like, it's a joke. Yeah, but... Why why are those rich little I, let singers me just, offended? Let me just put it this right? way. I once stopped dating a girl. The only reason was because she thought Chelsea Handler was funny. Hmm. I, would, I would condone that. But, um, yeah, well, Chelsea Handler's got other... Chelsea Handler is one of these people who sort of she's down with all the retarded causes and acts, uh-huh. you know, that I, I just I don't like any of the wokesters. And I don't I especially don't like people who go, hey, imagine how much harder I had to work. It's the it's the Ellen syndrome. You know, I'm a lesbian and I'm a woman. And so imagine like stop fucking blowing smoke up your own ass. You're you're mainly here because of those things. Yes, you know? I think it's amazing for a woke person to make another woke person angry. I yeah, love that. But I, I agree. <laughs> and I don't know what I don't I didn't watch guillotines. it. So I, I was watching the Rams lose, so I don't I don't know. I always what say happened. it when the so guillotines I, come happily. out. What were what was the pizza so, in the back? So here's okay. here's uh we got a video showing this. Well they what they served was uh individually wrapped hot bags of pizza. You know when you get a chicken sandwich at KFC, it comes in that nice hot bag. Mm-hmm. So they tried to make these things for the the pizza they put them in individual bags mm-hmm. and um one lady who was at oprah's table because she's in the movie uh the color purple mm-hmm. um she wasn't really happy about Taraji it P. Hansen? fantasy fantasia oh, fantasia, fantasia. Oh, all right God. did they have this clip or is it just this is how yes. things work or is he they ready for it yeah all right we'll see it all right i didn't know if you're calling for it or buying time nope all well right. i guess i'm buying time <laughs> Um, it's some volume. She's <laughs> volume always catches everyone off guard. <laughs> yeah, I'm with her. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm with you, but I've never turned down a piece of pizza. When you're saying pizza in a bag, I thought you meant like a bag of pizza. No, we'll get it. We'll, we'll find you. There you go. We have a plate of very decorative homes. So it looks like, almost like you're getting a sandwich at Chick Fil A. It's the same kind of. Bag. Yeah, well, they're kind of doing. <clears throat> they're doing what they do with big cookies. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, now here's here's the point. Here's the point that I want to make. Um, Paul Giamatti turned it into a chance to make money, as if he needs more. But Paul Giamatti not happy with his amount of endorsements. I guess these days. And so at his speech, he won for um, best Paul Giamatti in a Paul Giamatti film. Uh, let's see his uh, acceptance speech. I'm guessing Dawson's not a Giamatti fan. I don't know, but he, Dawson keeps doing this thing he's, with his arm. Did he, that's just, she like, he's did, did he fuck your girlfriend um, or something? Yeah, they can't see me, but I'm signaling him to put the video up. It's very personal, Dawson. Did he fuck your girlfriend? Something uh, happened yeah, between you guys. No, I love it's Paul Giamatti. I didn't get that email. So. I, I, I love Paul Giamatti. I just don't think he needs more endorsement deals. Mm. You're doing all right. Sorry, I didn't get my, that email. Yeah. He's doing all right. He, he How'd won. you get the other one then? <laughs> you know my greatest thing is, is I sit here and do this all day. Like, come on, Chris. I fucking told you we're going to play the clip. And he'll go, you never said. And I do love it when Chris comes over here or Dawson comes over on this side of the class and gets experience. All I have is a note that says Pizzagate at the Critics' Choice Awards. 
All right. And then you'll hear how it goes. And then I told you that I wanted the Paul Giamatti thing. And then they go, you never said No, it's, it's, it's all in the email. It's all in the email. Yeah. All right. Now you got to find the email. I flew next to Paul Giamatti one time. He was the nicest guy ever, Dawson. I love Paul Oh, Giamatti. I believe, I believe he is. all the endorsements. Yeah. I believe he is. I want him to have more endorsements, Dawson. Okay. I want, I want okay. him to have more well, fucking endorsements he wants. Maybe. Well, what he does he is does. He, he pitches himself uh, for pizza in a bag. Mm-hmm. That's a joke. Um, right. I Byron, grab the vids of the pizza in the bag being handed out and Paul Giamatti mentioning pizza in a bag. Thanks, bro. You got to put an email next time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the whole thing I'm realizing is that um, people tell me all the time, you got to put stuff in the email. And I go, I called the person and I told them, do this thing. And they go, you got to put an email. But I think we're at the point where people are sort of done with emails, too. Got to put in a Snapchat. I think you have DM to DM them. It really has to be in the subject. Yeah. I think it's got to be in the subject because yeah, I, yeah. I think maybe that's it. I'm yeah. certainly guilty of, of whiffing on stuff. All right. You can do another story and we can get back to Paul and all his lucrative endorsement deals. The guy's King Midas, I tell you, man. I think he was just telling a joke. Well, yeah, as we, uh, well, yeah, we I was just, I was just simple. Right. Paul Giamatti gave in some acceptance speech. And he, it was a little confusing at the top because he was talking about it. Did he him. win for uh, whatever movie, The Outsiders or whatever? And did did his lady friend? So uh, now here's what I do when I watch movies. Right, mm -hmm. I saw that movie with um, with a friend, and and when it was done. We were like, yeah, it was pretty good. It was a little bit long, but it was a good movie, and Giamatti was good. And I said, yeah, the fat, black, chain-smoking, sassy secretary lady's going to get nominated. Mm -hmm. And the person I saw the movie with said, she wasn't that good. And I said, no, she's fat, she's black, she's smoking, and she's sassy. Mm -hmm. She's going to get nominated. And then she went, the person I was talking to went, she wasn't even in that much. I said, I you're playing, I, and by the way, I have people, I have these conversations with people all the time. They go, yeah, but she wasn't. I go, you don't even know. You do not know how this works. She won the Golden Globe. The woman who was okay in the movie, but not necessary, but whatever. But I was like, she's, her son died in the movie. Yeah. In the movie, she had a son who was military and died. She was like wisecracking and tell it to me straight and smoking and <laughs> drinking and and sassy, and she's big. And I was like, she's getting nominated. And the person was like, why? And I was like, well, because that's, that's, that's how this works now. Do you understand? So she won the Golden Globe. I don't know if she won uh, this one or not, but she will be heading toward the Oscar, and she will win Best Supporting Oscar, unless somebody fatter and blacker I'm so jealous. Or something uh, shows up I want to play Brad, Brad, Brad William uh, trans. Transitioning like a major transition oh, into an oh, Asian win. woman. You win everything. Yes. Yeah, yes. I want to be starting making like right. a Brett Williams. We found become Paul. A woman. Oh, Darcy should put it in the email. All right, here we go. <laughs> we got Paul. I didn't. I didn't think my week could get any better than going viral for eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> Serious, guys. I need that endorsement, so let's all just pray for me. Thank you. Did everybody get their pizza in a bag, by the way? Did everybody? I think that'd be a good endorsement. Paul Giamatti for pizza in a bag. I thought it was good. I thought it was clever. But also, he did those Volkswagen commercials. And, um, and it wasn't it Volkswagen? With yeah. what's his I, face? I'm with Drew. I find this to be a weird angle on your part because you're like, who are the highest paid actors in Hollywood? Paul Giamatti. He's yeah, not allowed to joke Brad about Pitt. endorsements. I and, honestly and then, didn't know we get this Shaq far. Shaq does yeah. 13 endorsements. And uh, now, if one of the Manning brothers did that, this is a good angle. Because I, I see your point. I see your but point. I, and he I see did. Your point. Paul. Did do Volkswagen. Right. Could have been several years ago. He also did uh, AT&T recently, I believe it was. Or, oh, he did. Um, with some. Yeah. With he the, did, with he the... is, he's, he's not as ubiquitous as deer in Michigan, but I see your point. Mm-hmm. Yes. He, he, it's, it's a, it, but also he's making a sort of self-deprecating joke. Yeah. joke yeah. So, uh, right. but all right. Speaking um, of films, you, you watched Napoleon, right? 
Yes, mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't yet. Have you seen it? I it's I on now. It's it's, Phoenix, it's worth uh, watching. I'd say. Joaquin I mean, Phoenix. He's good. He's yeah. What do you, what'd you, what were your thoughts, Adam? We never it did. looked fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, my it's, God. It's worth it. He's actually, the, he actually spends a lot of this movie on a horse, so he's actually riding Phoenix in this movie. Is that ready, Scott? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, it looks amazing. Oh, it's it, worth it, it just for fun. that. Yeah. I said on this show, uh, look, somebody's got to, there's got to be some kind of accent czar. You know, Napoleon has no accent, but mm-hmm. when the Prussians come in, they have thick German accents. Well, and, and all the Frenchmen have British accents. They all have suppressed have British accents, <laughs> yeah, you know. Weird. It's just, it's, it's kind of all weird. Yeah, uh, but they, my, my whole thing is like, look, if nobody has an accent, then then nobody should have an right. accent. Or yeah. do it in French with subtitles, for Christ's sake. Well, well, you know, well, you know, you're, that's you, Drew, because you're a snob <laughs> and you, you <laughs> speak French. It looks amazing. It's a little weird. And uh, she, she nailed Josephine. I will tell you that historically, that was a pretty good Josephine. That was not. And Napoleon. he nailed her a few times weirdly. <laughs> like there was some weird, vigorous, like walking in on your parents kind of <laughs> sex. They they had some of yes. like, in the movie, like, like <laughs> not, not you know, enjoyable. Kind of, <laughs> I, if I was the actor and that was in the script, I'd kind of be like, <laughs> Can we tell it's it a little back? distracting. <laughs> like um, I, I have great passion for my wife, but mm, <laughs> this. Weird from behind. And by the way, does weird. such such premature ejaculation? Is that yeah. be that premature? I feel yeah. like my character. <laughs> did you enjoy last. the movie? I did. I, I am a student of that history, and okay. so a lot of stuff distracted me. But I thought when it was done, it's definitely worth it. And people that you know, here's what I would never say. Been exposed to that it's, it's important in terms history. of historical movies. Uh, this movie was not a great movie. No. Um, and Ferrari was not a great movie. Two okay. historical characters that took place somewhere in Europe. Okay. okay. But you should see Napoleon, but you do not need to see Ferrari. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even though Ferrari's at 73% with Rotten Tomatoes and Napoleon's like 60 or whatever, see, you should see Napoleon yeah. and not Ferrari. Well, when it comes to films like this, especially Ridley Scott, yeah. Ridley Scott directing Napoleon, you think you're going to get an epic battle. Well, you, you do. You do get you an do. epic okay. battle. You get a lot of epic The complaints I've heard, I haven't seen it yet, but the complaints I heard was they spent too much time on love and not enough oh, time no, on no. war. Oh, no, no. Plenty of war. battles. Plenty big of war. battles. Okay, good. Visually yeah. compelling. Like, like whoever the Game said of Thrones. Fucking war. idiot. But yeah. I think, I think no. what it all has to deal with, it all has to deal with the level of expectation that you yeah. go into with a movie. And right. you hear Ridley Scott and yeah. Napoleon, and you think. This is going to be the greatest movie that has well, ever two, existed. Two problems. One nice thing is they they you get a sense of what a shit show the French Revolution was. You get kind mm-hmm. of a flavor of that, which is like mm. they also. I told you they had this one thing Napoleon did where he opened fire on, on normal citizens, frankly, and people leave that out of the historical record yeah. very often, and they portray that exactly as it happened. The, the trailer was really good for the film. The yeah. trailer was pretty epic, so you kind of went in expecting bigger mm. or better or whatever. And it totally watchable. I would watch it. In, well, you can't see it in a movie theater, but let's see it on as big a screen as you, you could find. So the no. movie's uh, short, not the grower. Three hours. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. That's right. But I That's think right. the sex must be so much better during the ponies time. There's no porn. There's no OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. Big you mega bush. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. You know what, I, what do you think of this term? I used to, I've used this one since high school. Uh, the two terms involving the male phallus. Mm-hmm. I would always say gym dick. Like people go, it's a grower, oh, yeah. not a shower. I'd say, I got a good gym dick. It's yeah. not really good after the gym. It doesn't look It's not much. a James. It doesn't go anywhere. I just, yeah, it's, it's a gym. James. It's a gym, not a James. Gym. But it looks good in the gym, J-Y-M, because oh, when I'm just walking around, uh-huh. you'd go, man, I bet that guy's got potential. Uh-huh. But it's never realized. Yeah. yeah. It's never realized yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of yeah. go the other way. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My eyes kind of go the other way. Nice. I, I look at yeah. the All crotch. these years. Well, you, you looked at me once at the at a, at a urinal, urinal. You're like, what are you thinking of something? What's going on? There? <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's your gym dick. That is my gym dick, and it was that was a good gym dick day. But Hold I, on, I, I got a lot. I got a lot of range in my Dawson, gym dick. And my head's spinning today. <laughs> love are you line. You got a good looking line. gym dick, or you get a big boner. I, I can because I get a big boner. I can have a good gym dick days, but it's not necessarily so. Like right. bad you days, either so. have a good a gym cold dick day. or you don't have a good gym dick. Mm, well, no, you're not shoveling snow in Buffalo <laughs> Rich Stadium. <laughs> I would say generally. You, you're at the so gym, much. you took a hot shower. Not so mm. much. Not so much yeah. after a hot shower at the gym. Not so much. All right, so you're the grower, yeah. not the shower. Yeah. As so, compared to where we go, especially. Yeah, so I say uh, yeah. gym dick. Yeah. 
And then I also would refer to, and it's so funny because nobody ever uses this term but me, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. This should be good. <laughs> which I, you know, Drew, have I ever told you I was a ceramics major in high school? You have. I, I brought they, that they, up. I said you th- frequently through a weathered feldspar, in fact. <laughs> That's what we call So in, in ceramics, they had this term for the clay, if it was, you know, too new or too mushy or too whatever, it was, you know, it was soft. And then they had this other term, which is like it would start to dry up and would hard get get sort of brittle and hard and stuff. But there was a middle phase that called the leather phase, <laughs> you know? And, and I would always, like my friends would go, uh, hey, you know, your stepsister's pretty hot or something or something, something. And I'd go, listen, I, I might, I'd be in the leather phase if I was like hanging around. <laughs> you know, like I'd, leather meant you're on your way, yeah. but you're somewhere in the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you must have caught me out of leather. Your bags man. are packed, but you're not on the, the plane. G- generally right. at the gym, no leather. Yeah. No Maybe. leather. No, I know. But you could get a little leather if you pass the right billboard sure. driving around sure. town yeah. or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> the leather phase always just meant kind of the in-between yeah. right. phase. Before, before yeah. lift off. Yeah, and no one else was a ceramics major, but everyone kind of got... The reference that I'm kind of leather yeah. down oh, there. Yeah, there you go. So also, always, it can be a go. way to uh, measure how hot a girl is. Like, a, yeah, oh, it's a yeah. leather face. That's, She's a 6.5. Yeah, it's it a leather. Face. Or yeah. like yeah. a yeah. Brito is 8.9. Her you know, tits like, are or soft. Mm-hmm. Or soft. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> leather face. Yeah, it's good. Like it's hard. Like a leather uh, six in LA is a nine in Kentucky. No, I think she heard leather face. Mm-hmm. No, faith. Faith. P H A S. Face. Okay, good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Leather face. Yes. Leather face. Yeah. We can. Yeah. We can rate women. Yeah. By leather. Yeah. By leather. Yeah. We're at two mesons. Leather. Two mesons. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. I think Paul Giamatti would agree this is the best news segment ever. Adam was always fascinated that there were two Messens monitors that Mm -hmm. we used as physicians. I remember when I first described that you were like, what? Yeah. It's like Mm -hmm. a a band that you put around your leather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also a cologne called the English Leather. Oh. Oh. And they had the English Leather Girls. Oh. Do you remember that, that, Drew? I do remember that. All right. We have uh, Chelsea making a joke about Joe Coy used she to does be her do boyfriend. This. Oh. 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 He isn't here tonight, but that's not going to stop me from letting everyone in this room know that I would toss him around like a little Italian meatball. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. My writers wrote it. <laughs> that's not bad. Wait a minute. I mean, it's a dig, but it's kind of funny. I don't even get it. I, I, we need to start at the beginning. The way they were involved, they were a thing. They were dating uh-huh. for many years, yeah. for a while. Yeah. Uh, he's not Italian. He said Ita- she said Italian. She's not talking about Joe Coy. Yeah, we they, missed the they top always of that. Do, whenever we run a clip, we always miss the part that makes sense at the beginning. We were talking about Joe Coy. And no, I heard making a dig at Joe. No, Coy. what what happens is we didn't cue it. Yeah. We got the end of a Danny DeVito joke. Oh, I guess. Mm. All right, I, I don't. Well, well, let's try it. Let's and, see. And if then it's she at likes the small top. males. She yeah, so when we likes... we don't put head at the front of these things. Speaking of leather, <laughs> and then sometimes we don't pot them up mm. audibly. So yeah. we always miss the first little beat, and then it's. Screws your head up a little bit, but who was, what was the whole joke, or is the whole joke? Or We're pulling they, it up now, but it's Mark, Martin Scorsese. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. okay. What happened joke? I thought DeVito was a good call. If it, yeah, he's yeah. A more meatball shaped yeah, and shorter. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? An Italian. Thank you. Uh, so the Drew doesn't get it because no, Drew I do didn't, get. It. I'm still got Joe Coy in my yeah. head. No, he doesn't no. get the Joe Coy okay. part. The Joe because Coy he didn't part. See any of the controversy of the uh, Golden Globes? No, I didn't. Well, then why would you know? Yeah. Well, then you just think she's making a joke from a girlfriend to a boyfriend. I, I don't get the joke. You said Scorsese. Joe Coy, joke. Forget right. about Scorsese. Right. Let's, let's watch it again. Okay. Let's let's do it. for let's fun. Do it. But do, we got to add a little head or a minute or a countdown or something. But. I got it, actually. Good job. Yeah, I'm going to try to explain with my broken English. And, and he was the host of the Golden, Globe. Golden Globes. Yes. <laughs> this is funny. Ten years of this with Drew. 
Mm-hmm. We don't have it anymore. Mm. Right. Well, okay, I'm going to be smart here.、Okay. So she was making a joke about、uh, Martin Scorsese, and it's getting the laugh. And then she said that、uh, my writer wrote it because Joe Coy went rogue、uh, and with his things that it wasn't written by the writer and、uh, bombed. Okay. Joe Coy said that his jokes worked great,、uh, but the、okay. writer's jokes didn't. Kind、uh, of, he kind、okay. of threw his writers on、yeah. the bus. I didn't know、um, about that. Okay. Yeah. There and go. his joke actually Got did、it. not work. Thank you. And、uh, well, way to go, Chelsea. Still want to hear it? Do we know why they broke up? Do you have any insight into what happened there? Because she's love my life and then gone.、Uh, she seems like a handful to me. Yeah, He doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes. Yeah. That can cause a man to get out of his leather phase. I see.、Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because、uh, let's hers... see if we can get it now. Here we go. Unfortunately, Martin Scorsese isn't here tonight, but that's not going to stop me from letting everyone in this room know that I would toss him around like a little Italian meatball. <laughs> Okay, that's not even funny though. No, it's not funny. Thank you for laughing at that. My writers wrote it. Your writers suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Anyway, yeah. That, well, that wasn't funny, right? Though, right? No. By the way, just for clarification,、really、TMZ uploaded that cut off with the Martin Scorsese part. The joke、They、that、did. she starts off with. No, TMZ cut it off. Yeah, the joke、did. starts off with Leo. This is usually where someone would say a joke about Leo and his day being underage. I go the other way, and then she goes into Martin Scorsese. Okay,、oh, all right,、mm-hmm. but they didn't load it up how we first played it. That's、did. exactly how he just loaded up TMZ, and that's how they started it. They played it on half a joke. Wow, weird. I guess the fuck ups over there. Yeah.、Uh, all right. So anyway, Drew, you're clued in. Got it. Everyone knows the leather phase now. Yeah, that's, that's a good. good. Everyone good. knows where the gym dick is. I want to go to a ceramics class. But do people know what weathered feldspar is? That's the bigger question. <laughs> if you can get now, sounds if, like the guy you, who teaches the nature class. If you if you want to have a good gym dick, then get it to the leather phase. Yeah, but don't get greedy. Oh, then it gets weird. Don't get past、yeah. the leather phase. <laughs> if you get past the leather phase,、yeah. let's agree. Let's just say your balls were six o'clock. Six o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And your belly button was midnight. Yeah. Okay. You don't even get to twenty till. <laughs> <laughs> no. And let's just say we're facing a certain.、Uh, let's say we're facing this way.、Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, obviously, nine o'clock is out of the question.、Uh, <laughs> Eight o'clock is out of the question.、Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. That's the twenty till bar. <laughs> like, Seven. Yeah. Quarter after seven, five to seven, ten to seven. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. ten to seven. Yeah, just prior to seven. Yeah, yeah. Th- yeah. But anything past seven? For, I don't know. Yeah, I'll go seven o three. Just be careful. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This is why I said don't gild the lily with the leather phase.、Yeah. You want leather? You lose control at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, leather. <laughs> yeah, leather is about you know it's about six thirty, six forty five. Nine o'clock. No, that's, that's, no that's a no fly zone. Past nine.、Yeah. There are those guys. You ever been with the guys with the dicks that went past nine p.m.? Yeah, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of appreciate it. Yeah, but like, I feel like a leather face is like a, a, a tired a koi fish. Yes, tired yeah, it's, koi. It's hard but soft. Yes. Yes. Yeah,、leathery. but you know the potential. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah. 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 Leathery. Yeah. 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 Leather. So keep it leather. Keep it about six forty-five to、yeah. seven. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Oh, that's also how hard a girl is. If you get a man to leather leather face, you are around the seven point five. Just by talking, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. by chatting, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's see.、Uh, Grand Junction, Colorado Mesa Theater, January twenty six. Two shows coming up, and then、uh, Estes Park, Colorado Stanley Hotel, January seventh. Sorry, twenty seventh. Two shows over there, and then it's off to Naples for a bunch of shows. February off the hook. February. Second, third, and then、uh, Jabby Ying's got shows coming. She's got Maples coming up. She's got New York coming up. She's got Seattle coming up. You go to her website, JiaoYingSummers dot com, and.、Uh, Drew, what do you got for a plug? Sorry,、uh, go to doctor dot com, and I'd love to hear have、uh, all the Corolla guys over and gals over at、uh, my Rumble channel. Check that out. We do a streaming show three o'clock Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and you can get it there on Rumble. So check it out. So. Till next time, Adam Crow for Dawson and Jelling Summers and Dr. Drew saying, "Mahalo."